So we will begin now from the 20 yard line. First and 10 for the Oklahoma Sooners. J.C. Watson quarterback. Chet Winters will play the right half backstop. Stanley Wilson at fullback. George Buster Rhymes, the freshman, will start at left half back and Steve Rhodes at the split end spot. Oklahoma in the white, trimmed in red. And Nebraska with those bright red jerseys, the white helmets. A colorful sight here today. It is really all red. That's all you can see in the stands. First down for the Sooners. There we take a look at uh, the tight end Forrest Bellore and his latest uh, headgear. Louis Obrey at tackle, Terry Crouch at guard, Bill Bechtol at center, Don Key at right guard. Ed Culver also has a, a very stylish hat. And there is Barry Switzer on the sidelines with uh, second down and about uh, six. Here's J.C. Watts outside, makes the fake, and he has a first down for the Sooners up to the 35-yard line. And that is what Steve Davis talked about earlier with J.C. Watts. In the great running ability. Here it is again. J.C. Watts has got to have a great day for Oklahoma today. He fakes inside the fullback Stanley Wilson. He gets the block from his onside halfback that makes the block, and it's J.C. The, the play was designed to get J.C. on the run, and, of course, the safety has to make the play. to Chet Winters, not much, as Kurt Feinlein, number 59, the middle guard, buttons him down at about the 37-yard line. Chet Winters is a sophomore from Jacksonville, Arkansas. The defensive line, Williams, Clark, Heinlein, Wexter, and Nelson. Well, those two ends are tough, Williams and Nelson. When they pinch in there, it could give the Sooners a little trouble today. With Dan Kroger, Williams, Lindquist, Sims, Gary, and Means backing him up. Second down, about nine. Watts again turns the corner, gets to the 45. And down he goes, but he has a first down as Gary Nelson puts him down very close to the midfield line. That time, that time Nebraska showed the 4-3 defense. They have been watching a lot of the Oklahoma-Texas football games of the past. Texas runs the 4-3. Nebraska thinks they can get a little bit of an advantage stopping the outside game in a 4-3. This time again, they're getting the block by the onside halfback, number uh, uh, 20. Makes the block, and J.C. Watts again turns up field. Two carries for 30 yards already. First down for the Sooners. And off goes to the second man pool, and it's George Buster Rhymes, and he gets absolutely nothing as Clark and Waxter, the two tackles, pinch him on the inside. It'll be second down and nine. Rhymes has an interesting background. He comes from Miami, Florida, and was pressed into service as a starter last week. All he did was deliver for 132 yards against Missouri. And uh, so auspicious was his debut. As a matter of fact, he was named the Midwest back of the week. So he's a, a good replacement. Incidentally, his name is Rhymes. I believe we have it wrong on the graphic. Here's Watts again. Uh oh, he slipped and fell as Jimmy Williams had the pressure on him from behind. And as he tried to duck back, as he often does, he couldn't move it. Now that brings up a third down. Nebraska's strategy in the football game was to give Oklahoma the bad play in the first down, in the first down situation, making them having to go long yards on second and third down. And Nebraska feels like if they give them the bad play early, that that would make the difference in, uh, uh, for Nebraska at least to make Oklahoma do something they do not want to do. Oklahoma tries to take advantage in the first down. Nebraska says we're going to take that away from them. Steve Rhodes has gone in as the split end. Out wide to the right. But they third down and nine. Passes too low and tender for Rhodes. And Nebraska has forced a kicking situation. And the strategy of choosing the wind after receiving the uh, benefit of the coin flip may prove to be advantageous here because Oklahoma's Michael Keeling will be punting it into a pretty doggone good stiff wind. Average 41.2 yards this year. Good kick. He tries to keep it low and swirling, and it gets an excellent bounce. Look at this. Look at that. It's going to be down very close to the goal line. Fantastic kick by Michael Keeley. Got a good break on it. It is down on the one-yard line. In the big football games, like we said, it's usually defenses as we're looking at the uh, Nebraska football team. Jeff Quinn at quarterback. 
Andre Franklin at fullback. Jarvis Redwine, the eye back. And Tim McCready, the wing back. Todd Brown, the split end. That's the uh, group of young men. In college football this year, maybe the second to last weekend of it. Down on the one yard line. First man through, Franklin up to the five. To, uh, Turner, defensive right tackle, 255 pounder. Brought him down. There's Steve Davies, the tight end for Nebraska. As we move across this line, just take a look at the muscle development of these fellows next. I've never seen anything quite like it. Remington, incidentally, is going to be a great one. Just a sophomore at center. Veteran Randy Sloisner at guard and Dan Hurley at top. Second down, about six. No score. We've just begun. And here is Jarvis Redline. Gets it up to about the eight-yard line. Johnny Lewis, the middle guard, making the stop. There, defensively, we've got Whaley, Gary Lewis, Turner, and Orlando Flanagan. But Riley, Coast, Jay Jimerson, Lowell, Hayworth, and Sanji. What I tried to get in right before a Nebraska possession is in the big game, it's the kicking game that comes into play more often in Oklahoma, Penn, Nebraska back, but they're doing just what they like to do, establishing the running game. Third down and a key play here for the Cornhuskers. Third and three as they're deep in their own territory early in the first quarter. Quinn. And to get off in there, there's a marker down back here. I'm taking a look at the uh, the umpire call to delay. The uh, Huskers didn't get the ball off in time. So it'll move it back to a third and about eight. I'm just wondering at a game like this, you know, with a third and eight, you're deep in your own territory. Nobody is even expecting a pass. No doubt Oklahoma's going to be up there pretty strong. The question is, would Jeff Quinn at this point throw? Jeff Quinn is an outstanding combination of running and throwing. His 61.8 percentage every time he throws the ball. He just really has everybody concerned because he's so accurate. He throws a good pass, and he's got excellent receivers, Todd Brown, Davies, and McCrady, and uh, they run routes that are extremely tough, and uh, I don't think that you'll... Uh, they're not afraid to throw the ball at any position on the field. Incidentally, today we have an open line to Ohio Stadium in Columbus, Ohio. We know that many of you are uh, anxious about the Ohio State-Michigan game, and so we're going to give you periodic updates. When anything happens there, we'll let you know it. I'm Osborne, shouting encouragement over there as we have a third down now, a very long seven. Can't imagine what the delay is here. There was not a, a timeout. Quinn seems to be agonizing over something, and I don't know what it is. I can't even imagine what it is. But the officials now have called an official timeout. Well, the time clock isn't working. That's what it is. So the... Uh, part of it maybe you got it but one clock is working another one isn't working but there was a definite uh, delay on the play so it is third down a long seven and up come the big red team at the four yard line of their own territory and another one could that possibly be another delay looking on anxiously because this is a dangerous place to be. Down on the two-yard line. Look at the, uh, oh, yeah, there, there you see, Schlesner jumped out a little bit. Moved his leg. And a marker is down as Franklin blasts in. But we have another marker. The way Oklahoma's reacting here, however, it looks like it's going to be against... Uh, against Oklahoma. 
Oklahoma defense started to come off the field thinking that if it was against Nebraska, they'd decline the penalty. So we've had a rather, uh, I guess you'd call it a dismembered start here. Several but, minutes have been played right there, back and forth, five yards, back and forth. So up we come again with the third down. Third down, about four to go. All kinds of confusion here in this showdown battle for the Big 8 championship. If Oklahoma should win this game, then of course the Orange Bowl would still be up for a grab. I'll explain that a little bit later on. Nebraska, of course, by winning goes automatically to the Orange Bowl. Here's Quinn ducking inside. He may have the first down. He sprawled over the 10-yard line and squeezed the last inch out of it before Mike Coast brought him down. Very close to the 11, it'll be close enough to measure. Fans are uh, booing a little bit because they think that the official marked the ball short of where it was stretched to. First off. That's what Jeff Quinn gives the University of Nebraska that they have not had in the past since 1971 and Jerry Taggy. Watch him on the option play. Comes to the end man. He's waiting on the guard as he pulls. Then he cuts inside. He sees a little seam. He knows he's got short yardage situation. Gets the first and jumps upfield. They've always had excellent passers for Nebraska, but Jeff Quinn can both throw the ball and run, and that gives Oklahoma all sorts of headaches. He's a fine runner. He's tough, he's big. First down on the 11 yard line. No score. First quarter. And uh, swinging wide to the side is Tim McCrady. And he's out of bounds after getting just about a yard. Good reaction by Richard Turner, the defensive right tackle. Number 96. So that brings up a second down situation. I'll tell you one thing about Oklahoma. You know, they started on a, on a rather shaky defensive note. After all, they were decimated by graduation. But uh, from what I've seen, there's a certain quickness there, uh, Steve, that they've developed. They've got good team speed, and they've got a great uh, opportunity in last week's game. They've got a conference builder. They shut down uh, Missouri rather effectively last week. They're happy about that. They're feeling and playing confident. Second down, Quinn on the shuttle, pitches back. Red line outside. That's where he's dangerous. Look out. He's got a man to beat. He could go. Jarvis Redwine is going to go all the way. He turns around and taunts the player behind him. Touchdown, Nebraska. 89 yards by Jarvis Redwine. I don't have to tell you what this field is being pelted by. Orange is everywhere. What a brilliant run. Jeff Quinn comes down the line of scrimmage. Andre Franklin's out in front. Jarvis Redwine gets, his, gets the pitch on the outside. He's got the seam. Number six is the only one that can make the play on him. Hayworth, and he can't. Jarvis Redwine, 4-4 four, four speed. Outruns everybody. And it's going to take a moment to clear off the field. Here it is again. Watch Redwine just accelerate. He was a walk-on football player. Transferred from Oregon State University. He gets the seam. He's got Andre Franklin blocking. No one's out there, and he just goes down the sidelines. Hayworth had the last chance. Jarvis Redwine is a track meet. He's on his way. He's a sprinter. Excellent run. Good call by the Nebraska. I guess it was a good call. <laughs> Well, they were going inside, inside with uh, Andre Franklin, then all of a sudden they hit the big pop play on the option, gets the pitch, and makes the big play on the outside. So Jarvis Redwine explodes for 89 yards, and Nebraska, with eight minutes and 43 seconds to go in the first quarter, has a six to nothing lead. Kevin Seibel, will try the extra point. He's pretty good this year. 46 out of 48. Oh, this one could go up to about 90 rows with that wind behind him. Uh, they're explaining something about a personal foul. Did you see a, a marker down this? Yeah, well, of course. I think the uh, throwing the oranges on the field, oh. and uh, that's uh, in the excitement. It's still uh, you know, not the best thing to do. That's what uh, yeah. they call the penalty. And that'll be uh, attached on the ensuing kickoff. Kick is perfect. So 
Nebraska leads this one by the score of seven to nothing. And when we come back, Oklahoma will have an opportunity to try to put it in. I'll tell you, I was a born soccer player. Well, it didn't take uh, Oklahoma very long once they found the key, even though they were pinned deep in their own territory at the one yard line. That key first down by Quinn, getting it out to the 11, and then bang, 89 yards, and off goes Jarvis Redwine. Actually, that drive was 99 yards, not 89 yards, because Redwine got 89 of those himself. They took it at the one. Now the ball is being teed up at the 25-yard line because of the personal foul. That was all of those oranges that were thrown out, and Nebraska was penalized for it. So Kevin Seibel will kick to George Rimes, number four, or Jerome Ledbetter, number 20. Nebraska out in front. 8.43 to go, first quarter. Good high kick coming all the way down and driving Oklahoma deep. And even with the kickoff from the 25, he drills at 75 yards. But we must give Mother Nature a little bit of an assist. Of course, the adrenaline really flows in this football game. You, it's not hard at all or difficult at all to get ready and prepare for the football game. Of course, right now, Oklahoma feels a little bit of the pressure, the, the big long run, the big play. That has an emotional effect as well as uh, the fact that the scoreboard's changed. A little bit later on this afternoon, immediately following this game, the Trojans of Southern California, the Bruins of UCLA, and what should be a great crosstown rivalry, and the renewal of that will be brought to you by Keith Jackson and Frank Boyles. J.C. Watts ducking inside the hole. Oh, he gets five yards quicker than anybody I've ever seen. Russell Gary, number nine, the safety man, makes the stop. Put it back on the 24-yard line. Watts in the backfield has Chet Winters there, number 40. He's got Stanley Wilson. And there goes Bobby Grace in the split end. George Rimes is there on the left side of the wishbone. Boy, before anything can happen, Derry Nelson just bear hugs Stanley Wilson. What a defensive play by this All-America defensive end. Derry Nelson, number 92, right there at the top of your screen watching the play. Nebraska has two tackles to the uh, left side of their line, and then so the back tries to work away to the other side. Derry Nelson has outside the responsibilities, and he makes the play. An All-American, excellent speed, another one of the great Nebraska walk-ons. Nice hole, and Wilson gets it up over the 30-yard line. First down as Dave Clark, number 63, combines on the tackle. With Toby Williams, number 97. You'll see both of those guys in there a lot this afternoon. One thing Oklahoma can do is move that football. Well, they have, a, they have an outstanding uh, offensive football team. They've got good speed in their backs. The, the, the frustration is, is that they, they do not have David Overstreet in the lineup. He's the best blocker. Buster Rhymes is an outstanding freshman footballer. Good run run player, but is not a very good blocker right now. He'll get better, but he's not as good as they think he ought to be. First down on the 30. Nice change of direction. And Stanley Wilson gets it up to about the 39-yard line. Russell Gary. Nice move. Watch Stanley Wilson. He shows that he has the ability to make the change when he has to. He, the play was designed to go outside, so he cuts. He sees that pull and breaks to his right and makes a significant gain. He's had a bruised shoulder. He's healthy today, and uh, Oklahoma thinks that he's got to have an outstanding day, both he and J.C. Watts. Nebraska's concerned more about him than anybody else. Second and two. And going through the middle of the line is Chet Winters. Russell Gary making the stop. First down. There it is at ground level. J.C. Watts handing off to Chet Winters. Has great quickness, not the overpowering speed, but watch him just take on the good hit. Russell Gary, the safety. Nebraska's leading this one on an electrifying 89-yard touchdown run by Jarvis Redwine. Coming at 8.43 of the first quarter. Now we have 6.10 to go, and Oklahoma's on the attack. What a defensive play by Jimmy Williams. Crashing through to bring down J.C. Watts back on the 42-yard line. Jimmy Williams, a junior from Washington, D.C., a walk-on. 
Nebraska's got, they've got their two defensive tackles to that side of the field. They're both out there. It's called their strong uh, set, and so it just gives you an extra man and some little extra headaches to block offensively. It's a pretty strong set, all right. Yeah, it's exactly, but uh, it's kind of weak on containment to the other side, but when you've got a Derry Nelson to contain, you've got a pretty good defense. It's second down and 12. Bounces back to pass. And he is hit from behind by Derry Nelson, by uh, Toby Williams. However, his arm had started forward on the forward pass, so it is not a fumble. But Toby Williams reached up there and just got enough to snag that ball and to cause the incompleted pass. Oh, this defense is formidable. Watch JC, watch his hand motion. He'll be trying to go forward. Toby Williams, number 97, coming behind him just kind of nicks his elbow and causes the motion to go and the ball pops out it was, he was intended to go forward with it third down and 13. Watts sprawled at the 47 yard line it'll bring up a fourth down and this Nebraska team's going to get a standing ovation the defensive unit as it goes off the far side listen to this Keeling, who put the ball down and it was down on the one-yard line before, is a little bit farther back. Sails another good kick into the teeth of the wind, and a fair catch call on the floater at the 22-yard line. And so Nebraska will take over the football, 4.45 to go in this first quarter, and the Cornhuskers are leading by the score of 7 to nothing. The big red team coming out of the huddle at the 22-yard line. Now Oklahoma will be spooked a little bit. They know what Jarvis Redwine can do. He already has run 89 yards against him for the game's only touchdown. He's the deep man in the eye. Ball goes to him. This time, however, he is knocked down at the 27. Mike Riley, number 50, strong side linebacker. Ball on the 27. Jarvis Redwine, I'll tell you, is one of the grittiest players I think I've seen in a long time. I don't think people realize, Steve, what it's like to play football with bruised or broken ribs. It is murder every time you take a breath or cough or sneeze. And he's out there taking a pound. Look at the quick opener of Andre Franklin spinning up to the 44. Steve Hayworth may have saved the touchdown there. Here's the play that Oklahoma's been concerned about. The quick pop, Andre Franklin right in the middle. It's the trap play. Hayworth's got to make the tackle for Oklahoma with a free safety. He is quick. He's a bolter. He's been a three-year starter in Nebraska. He makes things happen so fast. One of the strongest players on the football team. His neck bows outside his ears just about. He's tremendously strong. First and 10 on the 44. Nebraska leading, and they have the football. Steals in motion. Wind shuttles across, pitches it back to Redwine, and he's driven out of bounds. This program is being brought to you as an exclusive presentation of ABC Sports. Let's pause five seconds to allow our local stations to identify themselves. This is KOCO TV, Oklahoma City. Jarvis Redwine, three rushes, 101 yards. Not bad for about a 33 and a half yard average. And of course, with that yardage today, he becomes uh, a two year, uh, 1,000 yard rusher. Two years in a row, he's gone over 1,000 yards. Well, in uh, the nation. Second down, about six. Quinn takes the stop, cuts back inside, and down he goes, but he's in Oklahoma territory. Johnny Lewis shuttled right across with him from his middle guard spot and buttoned him down. So it'll bring up a third down. And about two. Quinn really gives Nebraska a dimension they have not enjoyed since 1971. There have been some great passers here. Uh, David Hum, Vince Ferragamo, and others. But Jeff Quinn, the talented thrower, but what he does and causes defensive headaches of just having defense, the option, they are extremely balanced. I have to think they have to be the most balanced team in college football. Quick pitch. Here comes Tom Brown on the fake. Red wine fakes to him. At the 34 yard line. Steve Hayworth was very, very alert. Also, in on the uh, 
least slowing him up was Steve Whaley, number 57, who was not fooled, but he didn't make his hit strong enough. Ah, the razzle-dazzle starts early. Here's the pitch to Redwine. Now watch, he fakes to the uh, wing back, coming across, and then Redwine breaks outside, but Hayworth is alert, just like you said, Bill, and made the play, but uh, they're already starting a little bit. Ah, uh, Whaley's mad at himself for missing the tackle. First down for Nebraska on the 35-yard line of Oklahoma. Nebraska's leading this one. Seven to nothing in the first quarter. Hand off to Franklin. Gets a couple. Grinds uh, his legs forward as Whaley brings him down. Watch Remington, the center, fire out for Nebraska. He, he really is. He's, it's a first year to start, they say. Really accelerates well off the ball. He's blocking on Johnny Lewis. He got at his feet and got him out of the play. He did what he was supposed to do. Tell you, the Penn State uh, coaching staff was very impressed with him when, uh, when uh, Nebraska beat Penn State earlier in the season. The game was televised on ABC. Second down and about seven. Nebraska leading seven to nothing. We're in the first quarter, two minutes to go. Wayne just turns around and throws the ball wildly. Nobody there. Two men looking at each other, and the ball was on the ground. <laughs> that was not a trick play. Uh, <laughs> no, it was a busted play. Watch the, watch the backs. I do not know the numbers, but watch them collide. Okay, uh, who is that? Todd Brown coming across and red wine. Todd Brown and red wine collide. That's uh, the best defensive play Oklahoma's had right now. That's what happened. They were coming back across. Todd Brown, the split in, is coming across. Watch red wine. He's going to get the pitch. Oh, I see. Todd Brown was going to get the pitch. Right. They were going to do a little trickery. It red wine. Third down and 17 now. Nebraska's on the OU 42. Quinn just turns around and spins it outside to Redwine. Once he gets out there, he's dangerous. He's down on the 30, 10 yards short of a first down. Boy, Quinn is cool. He just pirouettes around in there looking for things to happen. Well, he was going to, he had the option to throw it. Watch it. He wants to throw. See his arm. He's ready to throw. And this is what makes him a great quarterback. Usually a Nebraska quarterback can throw, but now he runs the option play and gets it to his best back, Redwine. Yeah, you know the pitch on that one. That's kind of significant. You're a former quarterback. He pitches that one with his left hand. He goes to the right and pitches with his right. He's got marvelous agility. All right, here's Kevin Seibel to attempt a 47-yard field goal. He's got a lot of wind behind him, and it's on its way. It is good. He blasts it right through. Nebraska has taken a 10 to nothing lead over Oklahoma, and that score came with 43 seconds to go in this first quarter. Back in just a moment. Kevin Seibel, who has just booted a 47-yard field goal to give Nebraska a 10 to nothing lead, will now boot the ball off from the 40. Well, if he put it in the end zone from the 25, he shouldn't have too much trouble here. I think one thing should be said. It's not obvious when you're watching a game on television how much the wind comes into play. But there is a psychological advantage, there is a physical advantage, and Oklahoma will have it in another 43 seconds. Well, when you're an off offensive player, you feel like you're having to go uphill against the wind. It really, it, just like you say, it does have an effect on you. I used to always hate to go against the wind. I hate to play golf with the wind, for <laughs> the very reason. Look at this one. He boots it right through the uprights. <laughs> and draws a big cheer from the crowd. Oklahoma will take over the football, and with 43 seconds to go, no time elapsing, of course, since nobody touched it. Nebraska sets the defense. Oklahoma sets the offense. Oklahoma's had a couple of looks now at the defensive uh, scheme and the way they're trying to play the wishbone right now. Of course, there's a stat what Nebraska's done mostly on Jarvis and Redwine's big play, and I, Oklahoma will try now to try to establish themselves and get some confidence. You've got to be cool here. You don't want to make mistakes. Give them any more points. You don't want to try to establish what you can do best. To the first man through, and Jimmy Williams doesn't waste any time in knocking Stanley Wilson right to the ground. Two yard gain at most. Stanley Wilson, the, the fullback outside, and right there, Jimmy Williams, the junior, just takes him right on. Nobody's on him, and he just manhandles him. 6'3, 225, Junior Washington, D.C. Brothers on the other side of the line. Incidentally, in the Ohio State-Michigan game, after trading punts, the Wolverines drove down to the Ohio State 31-yard line where they tried a field goal and they missed it. So there is no score in that game in the first quarter from Columbus. And we'll keep our open line going. Yale is leading Harvard in the first quarter in that Ivy League battle at New Haven. David 
Overstreet has gone in the lineup. Overstreet, who's been hampered with a hamstring pull, is in the lineup for Oklahoma on a second and six. Handoff goes to Wilson. He gets about three, gets it over the 27-yard line, and it'll bring up the big third down once again for the Sooners as time runs out here in the first quarter. Listen to the crowd here cheering the Nebraska Cornhuskers who have a 10 to nothing lead. So well, that's the end of the first 15 minutes. We'll be back in just a moment. Reported, Ohio State and Michigan are tied nothing to nothing in the first quarter as the Wolverines missed on a field goal attempt of 31 yards by Ali Haji Sheik. It's third down and four for the Sooners, but they now have the win of their backs. Winners, Watts. Rhymes in the backfield. First down and then was bent backwards. I don't know whether he got his nose on the 30-yard line or not. First quarter stats, Bill. Of course, Nebraska leads in the total uh, yards because of the big run of Jarvis Redwine. If you're an Oklahoma Sooner fan, Barry Switzer's telling his Oklahoma Sooners right now that, guys, you take one play out of the Nebraska offense, the long run by Redwine, and, hey, it's just a 3-0 ball game. So, uh, you know, really, the statistics are pretty balanced, except for that uh, big run and the big play. And as we said at the beginning of the ball game, it would be the big play that makes a difference in the big game. Always has been. But you uh, can't take that play out. That's close <laughs> it is. All he needs is just one ripple of the big skin over it. Looks to me like he's got it. Well, it may not have been placed down, see, at the 25-yard line. It may not have been placed properly. From this angle, it looks like it's it's on. Thank you. I think he's expect inspecting the chain, make sure there's not any knots in it. <laughs> well, this is the biggest mystery of the weekend. Bigger than who got JR. Never seen this happen before. Never seen this happen before. It's like they're trying to figure out if there's enough yardage in the chain or the lines are wrong. I can't. Incorrect. I don't know. I thought maybe the chain might have gotten hooked. It's a first down. Sometimes it does get tangled up. There's uh, number 12 on the sideline, Bobby Grayson. Going in for Steve Rhodes. So it's the first down for the uh, Sooners. That's their fifth. On Monday night, the LA Rams against the New England Saint Patriots. And uh, I think we had Saints down there. I don't know how that could happen. They are the Patriots. I believe the uh, graphic is totally wrong because it should be. Uh, Los Angeles and New Orleans. The Saints are playing, but they do not play in New England. First down on the 30 yard line. The Oklahoma sideline crew is really upset. They said it wasn't a first down. Well, we've got a few interesting things on the official side. Uh oh, look out. J.C. Watts got some incoming mail from that side, and it is Jimmy Williams who just roared through to bring him down way back on the 23-yard line. Oklahoma's trying to go deep. J.C. Watts, the fake of the sweep, puts the ball inside to tuck it away. He gets pressure from Jimmy Williams and almost gets away from Williams. But there, David Clark comes in and also makes the tackle on J.C. An excellent defensive front of Nebraska. They're a hard-charging line. Oklahoma's got one of the best offensive lines they've had in a long time. That time, they didn't hold. Second and 18. J.C. Watts. Knockdown. All the defense has been tough. Pat Larson, number three. Russell Gary, number nine. J. 
J.C. Watts says to himself, what do I have to do to get outside? Well, he was looking for the pitch, and of course they had it covered. They had uh, people on the outside. He made the right decision as much as you'd like to. Now There's we the got correct it, right? graphic. New Orleans Saints at 9 o'clock Eastern time against the Rams on ABC's NFL Monday Night Football. Third down, 15, 13.45 to go in this first half. Talk about a big play for Oklahoma, trailing 10 to nothing. Deep pitch, goes to Chuck Winters. But Russell Gary is right there, and down he goes. Russell, Russell Gary is one of the smartest football players when it comes to knowing and smelling the play out. And again, a standing ovation for the defensive unit. Russell Gary is a senior from Minneapolis. Michael Keeling will have the benefit now of a big win to his back. Averaged nearly 40 yards on his two kicks into the win. Oh, he got a bad one. End over end. He didn't take advantage of the upper jet stream on that, and it rolls out of bounds at the 32-yard line. So we have exactly 13 minutes to go in the first half, with the Cornhuskers leading by the score of 10 to nothing. And when we come back, the Big Red team will have the football. Thanks to an 89-yard touchdown run by Jarvis Redwine and uh, Seibel's field goal of 47 yards, Nebraska leads 10 to nothing. In Columbus, Ohio, Michigan and Ohio State are tied as we move into the second quarter there. Michigan had the ball for 11 minutes of the first period, but didn't score. They missed on a field goal. Jim Cotera is in at fullback, lead man, and there is a marker down, about six of them. Greg Johnson, number 30, has gone in the lineup for Nebraska in the backfield is the eye back. Might have been movement. McCready will trot off to the far side. I'd be interested in knowing how they dead ball foul. move it in the line, Nebraska. First down. That's the second time that Nebraska's been called on movement in the line. Fourth penalty, total of 26 yards. First and 15. Ball on the 27. Nebraska out in front. 10 to nothing. Quinn hands it off. And it's Greg Johnson who hits up in there, and Richard Turner knocks him down. In case you joined us a little bit late, it was Jarvis Redwine who really got this crowd right up on their feet with a tremendous 89-yard run after Nebraska had gotten the ball on its own one-yard line, punched it out to the 11, and then Redwine ran 89 yards for the game's only TD. Now we're in the second quarter. Nebraska with a second down and 12, and a pass is complete to Tim McCready on the far side. Didn't get much. Just up to the 37-yard line as Jay Jimerson was right there for Oklahoma. Where's number 15? The wing back, McCready, number 24. It's just a roll pass. Jeff Quinn rolls to his left, throwing a little bit against the grain. Right on the money where it had to be to Tim uh, McCready, number 24, just an out route. Hey, I like the way Jimerson hits. He goes for both of those legs. Here's the end of the pass again, right where it had to be. Almost, Gary Lowell was almost there to touch it, but uh, it got by. Jeff Quinn threw it right where it needed to be. Done. Third down and five. Ball at the 36. Oklahoma has to stop him right here, they feel. Get their hands on that football again. A little bit of pressure. The pass goes out and over the head of the intended receiver, and it does bring up a fourth down. Ray Johnson over there, number 30. And so now Oklahoma says, okay, fellas, now you kick it over. You also got a note, except for Jeff Quinn, you had the second team players of Nebraska resting Andre Franklin and Jarvis Redwine. Katerra and Johnson were in the football game. Coach Osborne is not afraid to put in the second team players at all, but when you've got people like Johnson and Craig, uh, it's not a bad deal. Scott Gamar will make the first punt of the ball game for Nebraska. Averaging 39 yards a kick. This one wobbles off the right side of his foot. It's a pretty good bounce in favor of Nebraska and is going to be down inside the 15-yard line. Steve Davies, number 82, was down there. Well, for one moment, I thought it might have been touched by an Oklahoma player, but he stayed away from it. And with 11.21 to go in the first half, we'll be back. This is kanji, an important part of the Japanese written language. There are... 
Oklahoma has the football on the Oklahoma 18-yard line for the first down. 11 minutes, 21 seconds to go in the first half. Bill Fleming and Steve Davis reporting from Lincoln, Nebraska on a perfect afternoon for football. A little high handoff goes to George Ryan. Oftentimes when you hand that ball high to the back, it just destroys his dynamics and he just loses all of his punches so concentrated on trying to hang on to the football. So he didn't get much. Well, just short of the 20s, you can see. Ohio State has just kicked a field goal to lead Michigan by the score of three to nothing. That was set up on a 43-yard pass from Art Schleister to Calvin Murray. And Yannick Yevsky put it through. Mm, I, that might have been wind-aided. That pass was 15 feet over the head of Steve Rose. It wasn't so much win aided as it was David Clark aided. Clark, 6'3", 246 senior from uh, Odessa, Texas, the defensive tackle, really put his hands up in front of J.C. Watts, causing him to throw the ball high and outside. He's 0 for 3 today. Brass was doing what they wanted to do, give Oklahoma the bad play on first down, make him go for long distances on second and third. And here's Watts. He throws a floater. It is. Uh oh, there was some contact between Bobby Grayson and the defensive back, Andy Means. But nothing called. But for a moment, uh, Grayson might even have been called for offensive interference because he had his hands out there. But in the view of the official, no infraction. There was a little bit of rubbing uh, shoulders there. He got it. Kind of got his arm locked in with That's uh, what it was. Bobby Grayson, and I think that. Uh, the referee just felt like that he was not uh, actually going after the uh, interference. Oh, there's a beautiful kick by Michael Keeling, spiraling all the way back down to the 16-yard line of Dave Legal. And so it is down on the 24-yard line after 60 yards in the air. And we have uh, 10 minutes and 27 seconds to go in this first half. A lot of exciting uh, things happening at halftime. We'll be bringing you some of the highlights of the Ohio State-Michigan game at Yale and Harvard. We'll also have the spectacular Cornhusker Marching Band performing before this crowd today. The last home game of the season. Certainly not the last game for either of these two teams. It just depends on what happens here where they're going to go. Of course, Oklahoma has to play Oklahoma State next week in a conference game. It's back to Redwine. Notice how he hesitates just a little bit. He's, he's got that uncanny sense of just waiting to see, will the block be thrown? Well, at that time, it wasn't. <laughs> he's looking for that seam because as a running back, you just kind of feel and see seams opening up as you're running uh, lateral. Then all of a sudden, you see a little crack, and then you jump up field. Make, make something happen. Later on this afternoon, the Trojans of Southern California and the Bruins of UCLA following this game. That should be a dandy, the renewal of the, one of the great crosstown rivalries. Second down and eight. Quinn just turns around and looks, ducks through the hole, gets five or six, and he's knocked down about two yards short of the first down. Incidentally, that 33-yard field goal by Yannick Kievsky of Ohio State with the first points scored on Michigan in the last four games. A total of uh, 15 quarters, actually. So, Iowa State leading in that one, and Nebraska leading in this one. Third down at about a yard and a half. Pitch back to Redwine. Good, strong hit there. Stopped him short of the line of scrimmage by Mike Riley. Number 50 came roaring through along with Mike Coast, number 48. And that brings up a fourth down. That was a big play. You Oklahoma, bet. Mike Riley, the strong side linebacker, really made a play. He read the, the play, saw the guard pull. He baked, When he saw the hole vacated, he came right through that slot and made the tackle on Redwine. That's a big play and a confidence build for the defense. All right, here is Scott Gamar back to do the punting. Hayworth is back along with Rhodes. One short, one long. Good hit by Gamar. Drills it into the wind. And down goes Rhodes as he goes to his knees at the 31-yard line. 
and Oklahoma will have the football. We have eight minutes, 23 seconds to go in this first half. The Cornhuskers are out in front, 10 to nothing. At today's gas prices. And the Nebraska fight song is being played as we get ready to play once again at the 32-yard line. Barry Switzer has his team trailing 10 to nothing, except for that long run by Redwine, it would have been much closer. 89 yards at the eight-minute mark. Some seconds to go in the first quarter, and he ripped down the sidelines. Pitch goes deep. It's Buster Rhymes, and he goes to the 40. First down at the 44-yard line as he steps out of bounds, very close to the 45. Kurt Heinlein, number 59, was chasing him out. Rhymes has got some speed, I'll tell you. He's a tremendously uh, gifted athlete. Played in Miami, Florida in high school, a freshman this year, 6'3", 195 pounder. People back in Oklahoma say they remind him, of course, of Elvis Peacock. Wears the same number, Elvis Rand, Willard. Very talented, good, big play on the first down. 13 yards on it. The hole was blocked for Stanley Wilson, and the best he could do was about three, as Wexter, Heinlein, and Clark, the middle of the defensive line, numbers 75, 59, and 63 in there. Ball game's been very well played. There have been no turnovers. Field position has not uh, been a factor except uh, Nebraska got backed up early in the ball game. Of course, didn't take them long to change that quick. The long touch. Gets a second down, just short of the 50. Here's Watts back to pass. Rolls it, caught. Great catch by Steve Rose right on his fingertips at the 39-yard line. Andy Means was covering, but there was no way you can cover that one. That, ladies and gentlemen, is a catch. Rhodes has been the nemesis of uh, the University of Nebraska. Watch it. It's the fake inside. It's just the out route. Three steps back and throw. It's about a 12-yard out route. Rhodes catches it. That's his seventh catch of the year. Here it is again. Watch JC. Fakes inside. You're thinking run, run, run. And Andy Means has dropped off of him a little bit, so the pass is there, and it's complete. First down. Watts got a hole. Goes to the 35. Goes to the 30. His bounce back hard but his forward progress was to the 30-yard line. People flying all over the place. I'll tell you, there is some hitting down there, Steve, like we haven't seen. This is probably one of the most physical football games either one of these teams will play in because it's a great football game, and uh, they're excited, and the adrenaline flowing, and now Oklahoma's starting to feel kind of how Nebraska's playing, and they're getting to get some seams now, some confidence. Coach Osmond's looking out, uh, trying to figure out what defense they were in, and don't be in that one again. <laughs> Ball is about two yards short of the first down. Let's call it three. Second down. And Wilson tries to spin outside, but Gary Nelson's number 92 is there. Gary Nelson, named to the Football Writers All-America team yesterday and the only unanimous choice in the Big Eight, defensive end. Not that big either, only 222. But uh, that's a fairly high honor for a guy who's just a walk-on. Nebraska's got the most outstanding walk-on program in the future in college football with limited scholarships. People are going to be calling Nebraska to find out how it works so well. <laughs> a lot of these great players in Nebraska, all Americans, big eighters, are uh, walk-on players. And the black shirt's being tested here as Watts goes outside, gets it inside the 25, and Russell Gary knocks him down. But J.C. Watts gives Oklahoma its best position on the field at the 24. Not even the best can get through. Exactly. Watch him inside. He gets inside. He takes the fullback. That was his responsibility. Somebody else has got to come quarterback, and they're not there. There was probably some sort of stun out there because he went for the guy he's supposed to get, and he didn't have the football. Hey, one thing, Russell Gary covers pretty fast. Steve Rose is out wide to the right now with a first down for Oklahoma, their best shot of the day. On the 24, handoff goes to the... Aha. Wilson, and as he spins off to the left side, he goes out of bounds about on the five-yard line. There was some trickery that we have not seen before. I said the aha because I couldn't find the ball. <laughs> when I found the ball, I was amazed. Let's look it, at it. It's Stanley Wilson. Let's see where he goes. He gets right there. Oh, he just got the ball in the base place, and the flow went to the right, and he just back-legged and turned to... Nice was that planned or not? Well, he, huh? he likes to cut back, I think. We'll have to ask Well, if it wasn't planned, it'll be in the playbook against Oklahoma State, I can guarantee you. First and goal to go for Oklahoma. Handoff. And no, a fake handoff, and as Watts goes by, 
He is knocked down by Andy Means on the three-yard line. Stan, Stan Wilson had a hole you couldn't believe. Watch J.C. They get the corner, just what they want. They've got the ratio they want. He can pick the ball now. He says, no, I can get to the end zone. Williams is there and Means. Here it is again. Watch J.C. come down the line of scrimmage. He's looking for the seam. He's got Rhymes with, for the pitch. And Andy Means comes out and makes the tackle. Before a look at him. Watch the look that J.C. sees. He thinks maybe I can pitch. No, he sees the corner of the end zone. And Williams' pursuit and speed pulls J.C. down. Well, the thing that bothered Wilson is that he had an absolute waltz into the end zone, but didn't have the ball. Oh, there's a big stack up in there. It might have been a lost football. The way that Nebraska is cheering. This is where Nebraska gets so tough. They're so physical. They've got good, strong people, good size inside, and the defensive ends. Oh, J.C. Watts, the number one scorer on the team, likes to score. Of course, that's by design more than anything else. So it'll be on the three-yard line. It'll be third down. There was no fumble. And now Oklahoma trailing 10 to nothing. 4.27 to go in the first half. Has the ball on the three-yard line. As Nebraska has its black shirt defensive unit up there. Watts, he's got room. Touchdown, Oklahoma. Great play by J.C. Watts. The flare blocking scheme, it's just designed. J.C. supposed to take whoever, whatever happens. Nobody comes for the quarterback. J.C. Uh, walks into the end zone. It's a cakewalk. And Watch Wilson this. put the block in there that he had to put in. The block and J.C., there's nobody comes for the quarterback, and you just walk in. That happens sometimes on the wishbone. Different responsibilities, and they do different things, and you find yourself with nobody to pitch off of. And it's 10 to 6 as Mike Keeley will try the extra point. He puts it up and drills it. It's 10 to 7. And really a brand new ball game as Oklahoma has proved that they can move the football against Nebraska. So with 4.17 to go in the first half, three-point difference. Now we'll be back. Nothing builds confidence like touchdowns. It was an excellently executed drive. The big play, of course, Steve Rhodes and the great catch on the out route. J.C. Watts, we said at the very beginning of the ball game as we're looking at the tie, Michigan-Ohio State 3-3. It was We said at the beginning it would be J.C. Watts. He had to have a great day, and he's having one so far. He's executing quite well. And as you can see, Michigan and Ohio State are all tied up. Here's Michael Keeling getting ready to boot. Anthony Steele's number 33 is deep, along with Ricky Simmons, number 7 for Nebraska. Line drive, wobbly kick, way over the heads of everybody, and out of the way. And Nebraska will take over the football. Well, it was a well thought out drive by the Sooners, moving 68 yards. And some scores coming in now. Rutgers over Colgate. Lehigh and Lafayette. Well, there's an old rivalry. And Yale still leading Harvard 7 0 in the first quarter for the championship of the Ivy League. First and 10 for Nebraska. Carolina over Duke. As we come up to a first and ten with 4.17 to go in the first half, it's a 10-7 ball game. On the delay, and off the red line, he's caught back there, and down he goes at the 17-yard line. Orlando Flanagan, number 53, the defensive right end, got in there so quickly, red line didn't really have an opportunity to, rea to react. It's a delay-type play. Watch... Jeff Quinn kind of delay. It looked like there was a little bit of confusion, so Redwine bop, uh, pops outside. Flanagan's there and makes the tackle on him. It looked like a little bit of confusion to brass the second uh, backfield at that time. Roger Craig has gone in as the eye back for Redwine. There's number 21. Quinn shuttling across, pitching it back to Craig. Craig makes his move and is knocked out of the 24 yard line. A solid hit by Steve Whaley, number 57. how the eye back looks at things. Watch Roger Craig get the uh, option off of uh, Jeff Quinn. Now look what he sees. He sees the block outside. He jumps inside. And Steve Whaley has to come from his defensive end position to make the tackle on him. Nebraska has no first downs in this quarter as Oklahoma's done a good job defensively. Three minutes to go in the first half. And it's 10 to 7. Nebraska out in front by three. It's a third down and seven. A deep pitch and it's a wild one to Craig. Now he's really caught and barely gets back to the 21 yard line. I'll tell you, he's lucky he caught that ball. That shows you concentration. Good job, Roger. 
Jeff Quinn might have misread the Oklahoma defense because he just stopped. He pitches way too soon. He didn't have to pitch. That's part of it. The pitch was back a little bit uh, off pace for uh, Roger Craig 21. Jeff Quinn, he just pitched off the wrong man. Didn't have anybody really to pitch off of. Scott Gamar to butt into the wind. And he gets a kick that wobbles up and floats. And it is taken there at the 45 yard line. And the ball is fumbled. But covered by Oklahoma for 42. That was Benson who got the ball eventually. Or Dawson. As we take a look at some other scores, the ball will be placed out of the 45 yard line. Tennessee out in front of Kentucky in an SEC battle. Clemson over South Carolina. Mm, there's kind of a big surprise. Rogers is coming. How about that? Watts fakes and now decides to run. Backs across the 50 yard line to the 48. Steve Damkroger brought him down about a six or seven yard game, but there's a marker down. Face masking penalty against Nebraska. Incidentally, in the Michigan-Ohio State game, the uh, Michigan score came on a 43-yard field goal by Ali Haji Sheik with six minutes to go in the first half. A basket, first down. Let's try to figure out who made uh, the, uh, had the infraction. There's Derry Nelson. He's taking on the block. He's pushing. Well, he's got a little bit of, uh, I don't know if the flag was thrown on Nelson, though. He's trying to get his hands away from the face mask area. I don't think the flag was on him. I think it was on someone else. First down on the 34, and here goes Watts. Oh, what a move. He puts on that man, and he flips the ball up. This may go. Rhymes is out of bounds on the two-yard line. What a brilliant play by J.C. Watts. Not only does he make a great move to the outside, but then just fired that ball back to Rhymes, who was the trailing back. J.C. Watts has to have a great football game. He is really executing quite well. Watch him. He cuts inside. Nobody's for him. He cuts inside. Now watch this. He jukes inside, then back out. And then makes and the then great goes, pitch. And then makes the great pitch to Buster Rhymes. I was waiting for it. There it goes. Now he pitches downfield to Rhymes. First and goal to go for Oklahoma at the four. Watts on the deep pitch. Outside goes Chet Winters. Foot race touchdown. Oklahoma has taken the lead over a stunned Nebraska team. And it's the brilliance of quarterback J.C. Watts has carried them down. Let me tell you who put that play in right there. It was split in Steve Rhodes. There's Chet Winters. Watch you. I don't know if you'll see the block right there. Steve Rhodes makes that block right there on either Sammy Simpson or Gary Ru Russell Gary. That's what put that play in the end zone. Michael Keeling has taken off his kicking shoe, kicks barefoot on the uh, extra points and field goals, and it's true right through the mark. And it is now 14 to 10, and Oklahoma has come roaring back in this one to take the lead over the nation's fourth-ranked team in one poll, third-ranked in another, and first in two others. Well, I hope we get a chance to see that play again. Steve Rhodes, the split in, makes the great block. That was what makes the play. Everybody's got responsibilities when you're a, a team that runs outside. You've got to make something happen. There's got to be the right block. Steve Rhodes makes the credit. It is a, a great play because of what Steve did on the corner that time. Well, of oh. course, it was set up by the great run of Watts and the lateral back to Buster Rhymes. And then they just took it in from the four-yard line. I rather imagine that Nebraska's defense is saying, hey, this is uh, not your ordinary uh, afternoon. Isn't it odd, too? What happened, what, what happened when the teams had the win? That, that psychological yep. and just that mental attitude about going against the wind. It is an uphill battle when you're going against it. And they're going to have to go uh, at it again. Jeff Quinn there on the sidelines, hands on hips next to Tom Osborne, who incidentally was named the Big 8 Coach of the Year for 1980, and we'd like to congratulate Tom. A brilliant record that he's compiled here in eight years, and of course uh, has carried the Cornhuskers into this game with a 9-1 and one record. That was an interesting shot, a high shot showing the deployment. Only 36 seconds to go 65 yards for Oklahoma. Talk about explosiveness. That wishbone can do it for you if, with the right people. Any offense is just like that. You've got to have the right people. Here is Keeling. He's going to kick it off barefoot. Hits the uh, toss 
fun. So it's out of the field of play the minute it touches it. And with 1.41 to go in the first half, Oklahoma has come storming back with 14 big points to lead it 14 to 10. Now Nebraska feeling it has to get back up on top before they go out at halftime. A lot of fans here from Norman and the Oklahoma Parks. You've got to assess the football game that the Nebraska outright won the first quarter. Oklahoma has really been strong in the second quarter, so it, it'll be about even, even though Oklahoma has the lead at halftime. Jeff Quinn, back to, well, looked like he was going to try to pass on first down, then sprints outside and gets six. Harold Sanji making the stop. Also in on the play. Two carries actually. Russ Gary plays for Nebraska. And Keith Gary is Oklahoma's young man. Oh, there's a clip against the Huskers. Ooh, big 15 at this point. 132 to go. First half. In case you join us a little bit late on this delightful crisp afternoon, Jarvis Redwine put Nebraska out in front with an 89-yard touchdown sprint. Art George of Winfield. And then a 47-yard field goal made it 10 to nothing. But the Sooners we said, hey, we're not out of that. Flipping Nebraska to downtown second down. Well, it was a dead ball foul. Okay, it comes all the way back to the 13, and significantly it cost him the uh, down at second and 17. Time of the utmost importance now to the Huskers. 127 to go in the first half. And off on the delay to red line, but he doesn't get much up to the 18-yard line. Richard Turner, number 96, knocked him down. Clock moving. Time called here by Oklahoma as it's put down on the 18 yard line. Boy, in the space of about three and a half minutes, or three minutes actually, Oklahoma has just come roaring back. Watts on a three yard run for the touchdown after a nice 68 yard drive, and then Winters came right back on a three yard run, and that made uh, the score 14 to 10. Those scores were only separated by, what, two minutes and 24 seconds. Well, we'll be with you tomorrow with some exciting action on College Football 80 over most of these ABC stations. Ohio State, Michigan, Nebraska, Oklahoma, South Carolina, Clemson, that's turning out to be a good one. Texas and Baylor in the Southwest Conference. Stanford and Cal, the big game on the coast as far as the, those two rooters are concerned. And Mississippi State and Ole Miss. Incidentally, immediately following this game, you're going to see live UCLA and USC from the Coliseum. A lot of action coming up next week, too, on Thanksgiving week. Penn State and Pitt, Army Navy. As we wind down the season, college football for 1980, it's a third down and 12, and here's Quinn. Throws, got him, steals at the 31. Well, it's not enough. I don't believe, is it? It's right on the 30-yard line. Got the market. First down. First down with uh, 105 to go. Quinn looking over the defense, hands it off to Redwine. He blasts in there hard. And Turner knocks him down. With two minutes and two seconds to go in Columbus in the first half, the score is still tied between Michigan and Ohio State, three and three. Incidentally, a uh, tie does Michigan no good in that game as far as the Rose Bowl because the team with the better overall record is the one that would go to the Rose Bowl as the Big Ten representative. So the Wolverines will have to win it in order to go. Ohio State can win or tie it. Well, it's been all Oklahoma in this quarter, and as Steve Davis pointed out earlier, Nebraska won the first quarter. Exactly. It was just a reverse of that in the uh, first quarter. 
But uh, I think Oklahoma was able to kind of figure out what Nebraska was doing. And one thing that I noticed about Nebraska, they did not go back to the 4-3 in the second quarter. They had a lot of success with it in the first quarter, and I have not seen it very much in the second quarter. And I'm wondering if uh, at halftime they want to make some adjustments and go back to it because traditionally the 4-3 has caused trouble for Oklahoma wishbone teams. So time is in now. With a second and seven, the ball is resting on the 33-yard line of the Big Red team. Trailing 14 to 10 to Oklahoma. Quinn now drops back, looks from the 25 and throws it deep. Steals is there, but three Oklahoma Sooners are on it. Gary Lowell, number 25, the strong safety came up. Late in the ball game, they're playing pretty well dropped off. They're having to split the field in thirds. Watch him uh, still coming across the middle. Right there, low sees him that he's got to come get him and comes and makes the play and bats the ball away. Play action type pass. Jeff Quinn is best. The secondary stayed at home and did the right thing. And it was a great defensive play. ball is given to Redwine on the delay, but again, the Sooners react quickly on the defense as Orlando Flanagan, number 53, makes the stop. 43 seconds showing on the scoreboard clock. See the wind? How it blows the hair of all the uh, people on the sideline there. A very brisk wind that Nebraska is going into. There has been uh, no scoring here at the south end of the stadium where the wind is coming from. Nebraska's got to kick the football now, and it's fourth down. They're having to punt against the wind. Oklahoma's going to try to get something going, maybe get a return if they possibly can. I would imagine Nebraska's going to probably try to kick it away and make them go a long way for it and try, hopefully, to prevent any type of uh, return at all. So Gamar will do the punting with fourth down and five and 43 seconds showing on the scoreboard clock. I think, generally speaking, the weather all over the United States, uh, perhaps except for the Pacific Northwest, is ideal for football today and uh, should produce some really spectacular plays. We've had them in this game. 89-yard run by Jarvis Redwine and then a really a brilliant run by J.C. Watts after a fine catch by Rhodes. A brilliant run by J.C. Watts and a pitch back. Nebraska's got a trick play in the punting game. It might be a good time. Oklahoma's thinking they've got to get re return. Let's see what happens. It's legit. Ooh, and it was almost blocked. What a kick Gamar gets away. And he sends his man all the way back. As Steve Rhodes had to go back, those are really tough on a defensive uh, safety man when that wind is blowing like it is and so thick. Oklahoma was coming for it. He, the punter kind of, Gamar got his legs back so he couldn't get hit. Watch the pressure of the Oklahoma offensive line against the punter. Watch him kind of kick back. He says, whoa, don't get hit by anybody. He's kind of protecting himself, but that was an excellent punt. Good, long punt, 51 yards against the wind. Here's Watts. Outside he goes. First down and out of bounds at the 36. Russell Gary, number nine, running him out. Boy, he is so quick. I can't get over how fast those feet move. It's always, you know, it's, it, he's fast, but it's also a matter, it's a matter of who's chasing you sometimes. Hell, you've got to realize you got some great defensive ends. Watch JC again inside. Watch him make some moves. He sees he's got to jump inside. He's quick. Watch him stop, jitter, and say, I've got to get out of bounds, make something happen. Another first down for all the Sooners. It's all uh, Oklahoma here in the second quarter with 30 seconds to go, and they're leading 14 to 10. Bad pitch. Chuck Winters amazingly got that ball back. Gary Nelson was right on it. Oh, there is a case where they almost lost it. Mm. What happened? Sammy Sims, the monster, number six, the junior, came in J.C.'s face, made him pitch a little bit quicker than he wanted to, that's probably one of the scariest things to see happen. Some secondary back coming right at your face, and then all of a sudden, watch this. Sammy Sims, number six. Right there he is, right in J.C.'s face. He's got to pitch quick. And it's tough all the time. This is a high-risk offense, and you can't always hit him right in the hands. In fact, I never hit him in the hands. He was fortunate. He got a good basketball bounce. I'm sure what Oklahoma is thinking right now, they know Keeling can boom that ball. 40 or 50 yards with this kind of a win behind him. They can get that ball out there anywhere inside the 40. They feel they can go for three and get it. 
Yeah, but with 16 seconds, too, you don't want to be too risky and fumble the ball because Nebraska, it doesn't take them long to score either. They'd have to go a long way for a field goal, but they'd sure be able to go and throw some sort of pass. It's been a good first half. It's been an excellent first half, and it's uh, it's been a, a great traditional battle. 17-14 last year, Oklahoma won it. 17-14 the year before, Nebraska won it. They've always been tight. I'll never forget the 35-31 game as long as I live. It's hard to believe it was nine years ago. In fact, I was talking to Bud Wilkinson about it a little bit earlier. At that time, he was commentating for ABC, and we were both privy to seeing that great, great battle. That's the end of the first half. And the crowd a little bit silenced here as uh, Tom Osborne hurries and hustles to get to that locker room, his team trailing here, and a rather surprising second quarter as Oklahoma is leading it 14 to 10. And Oklahoma will have its option to begin the third quarter as whether to take the win or kick or receive. It'll be interesting to see. We'll be back with the stats are very close in total yards. 171 for Oklahoma, 195 for Nebraska. Key, no turnovers in the football game. Time of possession even. Oklahoma in the first quarter had 64 yards to Nebraska's 148. In the second quarter just reversed that. Oklahoma had 107, Nebraska 47. So, like we said, Nebraska had the first quarter all to themselves, and then Oklahoma had the second quarter. First score of the ball game came with 8 minutes and 43 seconds to go in the first quarter when Jarvis Redwine got outside. The ball was on the 11. The pitch goes to him, and look what he does. He really just had the speed. The drive started at the one-yard line. They had him pinned back on the great punt by Keeling, but uh, he just outdistanced everybody. Hayworth misses him. And he just uses that 4-4 speed, and he just runs to the end zone. Looks like, uh, I think it's uh, Jay Jimerson or, or Alan Lyday, number 18 maybe it is, but he was uh, taunted there by by a red wine. Now, Oklahoma came back after a field goal by Nebraska put him up 10 to nothing. And J.C. Watts on the option performs it brilliantly, gets a good block there from uh, Wilson and goes behind the block to score. And then a short time later, in fact, less than three minutes later, it was uh, Chet Winters who took it in again on another fine block by Rhodes. Steve Rhodes made the block, the great execution by J.C. Watts on the best two uh, starting points for Oklahoma, where they got possession on the field at the 32 and the 45. Oklahoma took both those drives the length of the field. When you give them good field position, they are tough, explosive. Touchdown by Winters. So their first score came with 4.17 to go in the uh, second half, first half, second quarter. And then the second one came just a minute and 24 seconds later. Now scores of other games as they come into us from around the country. It's still halftime at Turner, Overstreet, and Watts. Since Nebraska won the flip to begin the game and chose to defend the goal that had the win behind it, then Oklahoma will get its option here to begin the second half of play. And uh, the Sooners, I believe, have chosen the win. Well, you can go either way on that, I suppose. You figure, well, we'd rather have the win now rather than in the fourth quarter. It might die down a little bit in a half an hour. Who knows? Anyway, Nebraska will get the football to receive it, going into the wind as Tom Osborne tries to fire his team up, trailing by four. Oh, look at the size of Oubre. I imagine the reason Oklahoma took the win is because they feel like probably they've got a good feel of what Nebraska's trying to do to them, at least uh, defensively, against Oklahoma's offense, and they feel like they've got the momentum right now, and they want to try to keep that momentum. But uh, I tell you what, it's a different ball game when you give Nebraska the uh, wind and the football a lot in the fourth quarter. Right. They are extremely tough. Don't forget, one of the great rivalries in football coming up right after this game, the Trojans of Southern California against the Bruins of UCLA. Live from the Coliseum with Keith Jackson and Frank Royals. We'll be keeping you up to date on the Michigan-Ohio State game with our open line to Columbus. That game's still at halftime. It is 3-3. Three to three. Keeling. Number 99 will do the booting. And everybody up, all wearing red to try to cheer on the Nebraska Cornhuskers. We might have a moment here to explain what happens if Oklahoma wins this game but should lose next week to Oklahoma State. The team that will go to the Orange Bowl will be picked by the Orange Bowl. Well, if they get beat, uh, if they win today, you're saying? 
job. Oh, Oklahoma okay. wins today and gets uh, beat by Oklahoma State. Then the Orange Bowl, there would be a tie for the Big A championship, and the Orange Bowl would then pick the team. And if uh, Oklahoma, of course, wins, they've got to go. Uh, the Orange Bowl committee is going to wait till Oklahoma plays Oklahoma State next week, too. Precisely. Nebraska can uh, win it all by a victory here, but they're trailing by four. All right, here we go. Steels and Simmons are the deep men. Michael Keeling will do the booty. Nobody's been able to do much returning of kickoffs today. That's simply because all of the uh, look at this Air Force leading Notre Dame three to nothing in the second period. Wouldn't that be stunning? I think Air Force has been voted each week into the bottom ten for that uh, funny pool that they run. Out it goes. It's not too funny if you're in it. <laughs> <laughs> and now the Cornhuskers will go to work. First play of the third period. And they'll set that backfield. They'll have Quinn back there. Senior from Ord, Nebraska. Tight end is Jeff Finn, number 87. Andre Franklin, Jarvis Redwine. Anthony Steele. Oklahoma has a first to its credit. First team to score two touchdowns against Nebraska in the 1980 season. Remember, Florida State had to kick four field goals and combined with a touchdown to win that one, 18 to 14. Second down, four. Jarvis Redwine, there's nothing there as Mike Coast, number 48, knocks him down along with Johnny Lewis and Keith Garrett. The uh, fans are reacting to the Air Force score that was announced here. Air Force three, Notre Dame nothing, second quarter. about Andre Franklin and his blocking ability. You can't hit him all the time. Watch Andre, the excellent blocker. He's going after man. He's got him zeroed in, and he misses. He goes to the inside shoulder, and he misses him this time. You're not going to hit him every time, but he is a great blocker. He really good with that. Scott Gamar will butt against the wind here now, averaging uh, 39 yards, fumbles the ball, gets it away, but it's a high kick, and it may go backwards. It goes straight up in the air and out of bounds at about the 15, maybe, well, 18-yard line. Let's see. Brethet was in there on him. Talk about a tough mistake. Watch this. The ball hits him right where it's supposed to in the hands. It kind of went to the side. His hands kind of gave with the football. Redwood, what, watch him. And he forces the bad punt straight up. The ball went almost straight up. Watch the ball. It's right a little bit off to his right. Yeah, so actually he pulled handled. back a little bit. Now that's a turnover. That's a big play. First and ten for Oklahoma on the Nebraska 20-yard line. Handoff goes to the lead man through it. Stanton Wilson, the fullback, and he gets it down to about the 18 before Heinlein and Waxter bring him down. That, of course, is the reason probably why Barry Switzer went with the win. Get the win, and maybe something like that would happen. We've not seen the turnover, and that will be down as a big play in the ball game. You bet. Minus five yards on that kick. Ball went up in the air, and it just bowled right back as the wind took it. Now, of course, uh, Oklahoma Field, they must capitalize on this one. Timeout call by J.C. Watts wants to get things straightened out. So the clock is stopped with 12 minutes and 38 seconds to go in the third quarter. Oklahoma leading at 14 to 10, and now with great field position at the 17-yard line of Nebraska with a second down and seven. And we'll be back in a moment. 
Fleming and Steve Davis back in Memorial Stadium, Lincoln, Nebraska. The Cornhuskers have their work cut out for them now. They have their bats into their own goal line after a muffed snap from center on a fourth down punting situation. A short kick, minus five yards, giving Oklahoma the ball. One play is netted in three. They have it second down. Here comes Watts. Takes the pitch. And out of bounds goes Chet. Uh, winners at about the 13 yard line. Dan Kroger knocked him out. So the situation now brings up a third and about three. Oklahoma feeling, of course, if they can't make it here, they feel they could get three. On that uh, third, uh, second down play, Nebraska went into their goal line, their 6 5 type defensive look. And uh, you really got to get outside quick if you're going to make something happen out there because they are all stacked in there. It's very tough to make something happen. You got to break it quick. You're not going to get it. Watts, Wilson, Winters, and Rhymes. Watts, pitch to Rhymes, fumbles the ball. It's covered by the big red team of Nebraska at the 17 yard line as Derry Nelson grabbed the football. It's a third down play, faking inside and severe. They're trying to get the option play. The pitch to, to Rhyme. We missed him out of the side. The pitch was reasonably good. It should have been handled. Rhyme fumbled the ball, so it's all even again. And it all evens out. Barry Switzer is not happy about that. I think that's the first turnover by Oklahoma today. It is the first turnover. It couldn't have come at a more opportune time for Nebraska. about seven. 12 minutes, 20 seconds to go in the third quarter. Oh, yeah, I tell you, it's, a, it's an amazing thing about football, and I guess it's the reason that you just keep coming back year after year saying, I'm more amazed, I'm more amazed. You see a team with momentum, they got the ball, and they're ready to go in and either get three or seven, and boom, one little mistake, and the tables have completely turned around. Second down and three. Nebraska trailing 14 to 10. And off goes Andre Franklin. He's got a first down at the 29 yard line. Johnny Lewis, number 95, the middle guard, knocked him down. Nebraska's trying to do what they uh, set out to do in the very first part of the ball game is try to establish their running game, go inside, go outside, make things happen, give Oklahoma a lot of different looks, and try to get their running game going. And that's what they're doing. And they've got momentum right now. They, that's probably what Switzer was more upset about than anything else, the fact that momentum shifts. First down on the 29-yard line. Andre Franklin burns off five more. Mike Riley, number 50, making the stop. Here's a picture of the linebackers. Watch the guards fire out on the linebackers. They keep their blocks and just keep pushing those linebackers and stand in front of those people and move them one way and make Andre make his movements and try to judge their blocks and make the cut the de opposite direction. Second down, five to go for Nebraska. That's beyond their own 34-yard line. again and Mike Riley pulls him down but it's a first down 14 yards watch Franklin the quick hitting trap play again it's the trap play just inside flash right through the linebackers good offensive play by Remington and Schlossner on the uh, on the blocking up front that's the, that's the play watch the guard the guard pulls there's the trap perfect play and right up the middle of the linebackers that was the play Oklahoma was more concerned about he is so good on that play it's a first down for Nebraska. Quinn spins, pitches a deep to Redwine. Redwine is down after getting over the yard. Closing pass was Orlando Flanagan, number 53. Since the big play in the first uh, quarter on, on uh, Redwine's long run, Oklahoma's done very well as we see the tight ball game. Notre Dame 3-3 now. 
but uh, Oklahoma's played very well pursuing Jarvis Redwine, and they've caused Nebraska to go inside a lot more with Andre Franklin. Three to three as Notre Dame has tied up the Air Force. Michigan has just recovered an Ohio State fumble on the 43-yard line. That game is three to three in Columbus. Wolverines with the ball in Ohio State territory in the third quarter. In this game, second down and nine. Nebraska trailing 14 to 10. Went over the middle. This is his man. Too high intended for Anthony Steeles. And it brings up a third down and nine. Oklahoma, a team that traditionally has led the nation in fumbles. Much to their disgust, really, because it is it's a, it's a high-risk offense. They handle the ball a lot. The option, of course, with those uh, dangerous pitchbacks, but they've only had one fumble, one turnover today. Yeah, the first five games of the season, Oklahoma fumbled 33 and lost 18. The last four, they've only fumbled 11 and lost six. Big play for the Big Red. Third and nine. Quinn fires over the middle. And there's going to be interference. Daryl Sanji, number 16, was closing in on Todd Brown, number 29. Gave him a pretty good bump. And I would guess if we look at it again, you'd agree that it was interference. You look for Sanji. Is he going through the receiver for the football, or is he nudging before the pass? Watch First. Sanji, 16, come into the play. Watch, there he is. Oh, no, that's exactly. Good call by the referees. You cannot, if you're going for the ball through the receiver, you can do it. But uh, that time he nudged him before the ball was there and actually not going for the football. First down on the 42-yard line. Nebraska has moved it now after recovering the fumble at the 17. They've moved it out into Oklahoma territory. Ten minutes to go, third quarter. Two tight end offense, and Quinn spins. Throws it deep. He's got a man down the sidelines. It is overthrown by a foot. Jeff Quinn rifled that ball to Todd Brown, who was racing down the sidelines. He had his man beat by two steps. Quinn had an unbelievable expression. He jumped about a foot. Watching the fact that the good delay. Now he knows Brown's breaking deep, just running the, the fly pattern real deep. And watch the pass. He had him beat, overthrew him just a little bit. He was probably trying to throw against the wind, try to compensate, and the ball was a little bit too far outstretched over uh, Todd Brown's fingers. It's second and 10. The ball is on the 42-yard line of Oklahoma. Nebraska is trailing 14 to 10. And off goes to Franklin. Quick hitter gets four. Did you see the uh, center Remington fire out on that one? In fact, he's, he's so fast, Steve, that it almost looks like there's somebody who's jumped offside. I wanted to comment on that. He, he, when he snaps the ball, he just really explodes. Watch how fast he pops. Watch the center. Watch the center. He's, he's already making contact. The ball's just getting to Quinn. Now watch Andre Franklin pop inside. Watch Mike Coase try to take him on. Well, we're not going to see, see it maybe later. Third down and four. Remington's going to be soft. Oh, what great potential. Franklin stopped short of the first down at the 35-yard line. That brings up a fourth and a critical two and a half yards for Nebraska. Seems like Remington, when he snaps the ball, he just uses the ball as momentum to thrust him into the nose guard. So here comes Steele's in the lineup. Todd Brown reports back in. Tom Osborne, one of the most inventive coaches in college football, is going to have to call something here that'll work. Fourth down, two and a half yards to go. The ball of the 35 of Oklahoma. Nebraska trailing, 14 to 10. Quick pitch back to Redwine. Tough play. And Mike Riley comes in and shoulders him down as he loses three yards on the play. Keith Gary made penetration, number 92, but it was Riley who really threw the shoulder in there. I wonder about the wisdom of pitching back when you've got to go forward. I really anticipated Andre Franklin, something so on the quick I. hitter, the trap play. That's what they like to use at the goal line, and I thought they might come up with that. You have to compliment them. They've done very well playing against a great Nebraska offensive football team. I think it'll be interesting to hear from Ricky Bernstein, our statistician, as to what Nebraska has done after the first quarter, after rolling up, what, 133 yards in the first quarter. Since that time, they have really been shut down. First down for Oklahoma.
Jimmy Williams, who's been playing an outstanding game today, drops Stanley Wilson. Momentum just shifts back and forth. You would think Oklahoma would get it, and then a big play on defense by Nebraska. It is, that's what has made this game the, the kind of the football game it has been since 1971. I might add, the voice you're hearing today is that of Steve Davis, who was a former Oklahoma quarterback. And uh, Steve would attest to your great objectivity that uh, you're reporting in such an objective way on this particular game. Here's Watts tossed to uh, low for Bobby Grayson. In the three years that Steve Davis played as the Oklahoma quarterback, they won two national championships and also beat Nebraska, as I recall, three years in a row. So the man knows from which he speaks. This is the first week I've ever come to Lincoln, Nebraska, and my head hasn't hurt. <laughs> it's good to be up here today. It's the first time you've ever been allowed into the Nebraska <laughs> the chalk rooms and, uh, exactly. and film rooms. Exactly. It's a third down and nine situation now as J.C. Watts fumbles the ball, grabs it, but it brings up a fourth down. After unerring football for the better part of two and a half quarters, Nebraska's had, uh, Oklahoma's had a little trouble hanging on to it. It, it looked like J.C. never, oh, no, okay. It looked like J.C. never really got the football. The ball was snapped, and he's scrambling for it. I thought they might have been trying to pull something on Nebraska, but no. Well, it might have been trying to end around. I mean, the guard around play. <laughs> Here's the boot by Michael Keeley. Sails it down deep, and it goes into the end zone. So it puts Nebraska again back on the 20-yard line to go against a strong wind after a 66-yard boot. Seven minutes, 22 seconds to go, third quarter, and the Sooners are still leading it, 14 to 10. Copier companies have been... First down and 10 on the 20-yard line as Nebraska comes out now. 7.22 to go in the third quarter, trailing by four. Roger Craig has gone in for Jarvis Redwine as the eye back. He's behind Franklin. Johnny Lewis making the stop along with Keith Gary. 95 and 92 are their numbers. Look at Remington fire out here. He just really, when he propels the ball back to the quarterback, he just uses it and kind of catapults his body into the nose guard. Really is explosive. They've got in the front five offensive linemen, they've got four young men that are first-year starters. So they've got a line that's uh, very talented. So they've got some people that... Uh, Weren't around last year play. I remember Rick Bonas when he was at All-America Center back in 74 and 75. Remington did well following his footsteps. Pretty much 22, 23 yard line. Incidentally, in the Michigan-Ohio State game, Michigan now has the ball down on the Ohio State 14 yard line with six minutes to go in the third quarter. And that game still all tied. And now the Wolverines have moved it down to the 13-yard line, and we'll keep you up to date on that game. Third down here, seven to go. Well, this has been a dandy game right from the very beginning. Nebraska jumped off to a 10 to nothing lead. Oklahoma has gone back on top, 14 to 10, and here is Grant, looking. Throws to the sideline. He's got Craig Johnson, and he's buckled right at the 27-yard line. Harold Sorge comes up and makes certain. Another look. What's the play? Jeff Quinn drops back, rolls to his left just a little bit. Step, looks downfield, then drops it off to Craig Johnson, number 30. Watch Sanji, 16, come up, make the play where they don't get the first and 10. Then Jay Jimerson's also there. There's Jay Jimerson putting the stick on him, forcing Nebraska to the punt. Scott Gamar has been a busy man after not having the punt at all in the first quarter. He's been very busy. He makes sure this time he fumbled the last one, but the kick is a bad kick the side of his foot as he shakes it out of bounds at the 41 yard line in his own territory well coming up on nfl's monday night football nine o'clock eastern time the rams against the saints over most of these abc stations as the nfl season begins to wind down and uh, boy it looks like it's going to be a, a fantastic finish just like it is in college football bill what we said in our pre-game show in the big ball games and when you've got great offenses usually who comes into prominence are the defenses the big play and the defense, and the kicking game, I'm sorry, and the kicking game, the punts, the two bad punts, have really, the miscues have been different. Neymar's last punt was exactly 14 yards. The one before that was minus five, so give him nine for two or a four and a half yard average. That's got to kill you. 
got to have uh, all phases of the ball game. We've got to work together in the big ball game. Sometimes those little things are what makes the difference. Michigan has just scored against Ohio State. And would you believe, of course, it's that combination of John Wangler to Anthony Carter. A 13-yard scoring pass, and Michigan has gone up on top. Nine to three. We'll wait and see about the point. And right now, it's Watts who is really level. He was lucky to get that ball to winners. As Sammy Sims came in and knocked Watts down, and Derry Nelson was covering winners. Boy, oh, there is some brilliant defense. Here you get a big picture. Watch J.C. They do a little switch stunt. The uh, Sims comes inside. J.C. pitches quick, and the defensive end jumps outside on him. It's a kind of it's a it's a what they call a two-three stunt where they're stacked and they switch and they come out and get you. And here is Watts dancing around, and he's hit from the side and ducked down at the 44-yard line. There was a fellow by the name of Sims a year ago who was brilliant for Oklahoma. At that point, however, Watts did not want to meet the Sims of Nebraska. And now it brings up a fourth down, and the Nebraska defense has held. So Michael Keeling will come in. Now, what he'll try to do is angle this ball out of bounds. He knows that all he has to do is just barely touch it, and the wind will sail it up. Doesn't want it to go too far. Aims for the right sidelines. Oh, got too good a foot into it. And it'll be first and ten on the play. So the clock has stopped. We have three minutes, 32 seconds to go in the third quarter. And the Sooners are still up on top, 14 to 10. Shit. Well, that was a good look at the update on the Michigan-Ohio State game as Carter scored his 14th touchdown of the year. Now we're back to this one. In a great ball game as Nebraska is trailing 14 to 10. The Cornhuskers have the ball, but in another three and a half minutes, they're going to have the win in the fourth quarter. Redwine gets a couple. That's about all whether we can see that flat vest he has on or not. But yeah, you can see it. Wearing it on the out, almost on the outside. J.C. Watts on the sideline, getting a well-deserved rest. For the first time this afternoon, a man is down. Dan Hurley, offensive right tackle. This game has been uh, really injury-free. Well, it usually is late in the season like this. Uh, conditioning and uh, teams are rock hard. It looks like an ankle. Bill, we were talking about Redwine and what he's done in this football game. He's carried the ball 17 times for 138 yards. Only 12 yards in the last 11 rushes. Oklahoma's defense have really uh, shut down and kind of clamped down on him. Jarvis Redwine. We see that uh, flak vest a little more there. I don't know how much of a hindrance. He used to wear it underneath the jersey, and uh, you could see a noticeable bulge there, and he said it did bother him a little bit on carrying the football. Still 3-3 uh, at halftime, Air Force and Notre Dame. And as these uh, scores continue on the screen at the timeout for the injury, Michigan has just intercepted Arch Schleister's pass. And Michigan got 17 yards on the first play, so they've moved the ball down into Ohio State territory. Overstreet has been in the lineup today on a limited basis, suffering from a hamstring pull. Second down and six. Probably on the audible as Franklin doesn't get much. Johnny Lewis knocks him down. I believe it's Mike Bruce there playing number 76. We're trying to get the replacement here for Dan Hurley. A lot of things happening today. Trying to keep you abreast of scores from out of town as well as the Michigan Ohio State game. With a third down and four, the ball is resting on the 26-yard line. We have 2.37 to go, and Nebraska just waiting to get the ball at the win in the fourth quarter. Here's Quinn. Good effort, first down. Great play as Mike Riley put the stop on him, but he got it up to the 32-yard line. Well, I'll tell you, Jeff Quinn has been really the difference this year. 
asked him earlier about how he felt about not being named All-America or not even being named to the All-Conference first or second team. So it didn't bother him a bit. And he really meant it. He wasn't just kidding. But he's been the difference this year, carrying Nebraska to a lofty position in college football. Hand off to Franklin. Keith Gary, number 92, makes the stop. That play to get the first and 10, Bill, uh, previous quarterbacks, Nebraska quarterbacks, and not to knock certainly the talents of David Hum or Vince Ferragamo, probably would not have gotten that play. Jeff Quinn's individual effort and personal running ability, what made the thing happen on that, getting the first and 10, and now they've got the second time. little bit of a defensive movement they've been uh, actually uncanny in their defense Oklahoma's not stunted a whole lot today one of the reasons is because they've had problems in their secondary a lot of people have been banged up and hurt they've probably uh, most of the season have not had their first line players in there all years we're looking at Jarvis Redwine kind of getting a rest a little bit it's to me like he's hurting a little bit I don't know maybe I'm wrong but it seems to be favoring that uh, those ribs He's been uh, doing a lot of punishing inside running today, too, except for that 89-yard burst in the first quarter. As Steve pointed out, he's been uh, pretty well held out. Third down, six. Quick little toss, and Franklin can't hang on to it. Andre Franklin couldn't hang on to the ball. Darrell Sanji, pretty, pretty good hit on him there. Thoughts fourth down. Kamar, who got 11, uh, 14 yards the last punt, and fumbled the uh, snap and only got minus five on the one prior to that, has kicked six times today for an average of 28 yards. Needs a good one here. Ball maybe do funny things with that wind as it comes back to it. That's a wobbly kick. Touched by Nebraska at the 38-yard line, and that's where Oklahoma will have the football. So, with the clock moving, we have about 35, 36 seconds to go. Coming up, the Trojans of Southern California against the Bruins of UCLA. Marcus Allen, one of the great runners in college football for USC against UCLA. I don't know whether Kenny Easley and uh, Freeman McNeil, their great defensive back and great running back, will be able to play today for UCLA. be interesting to see. Here we go. First and ten. Oklahoma with the ball and with the lead as we move into the final 36 seconds of the third quarter. Watts. Trapped. Loses the ball. Covered by Nebraska. Henry Wexter. Number 75 was out there, and he came up with the football. And now Nebraska has a great break, because with only 27 seconds to go in the third quarter, they'll have the ball in the 36. Barry Switzer said Oklahoma would have to uh, get lucky and not lay the ball on the ground. Watch, J.C. gets a lot of pressure from different people. He feels the pressure. Now he gets the ball away from his body. And he pops the ball loose. And then Waxter is going to fall on it, gets to it first, beats uh, Stanley Wilson to the ball. Nebraska's in business. Waxter is 6'6", 267. He's got a lot of big body to put on it. And breaking away as Andre Franklin gets it down to the 17-yard line. Basil Banks, number 10, saved the touchdown. A quick opener by Andre Franklin. Look at this hole that opens quickly for him. Again, it's a quick hitting trap play. Andre Franklin just pops through the middle. They split the linebackers, and he breaks into the secondary. And Basil Banks has to bring him down. Quinn and the Nebraska him. players calling for quiet as Jeff Quinn comes up with a first down on the 16-yard line. Jeff Finn and Steve Davies, two tight ends are in. And they may be called here for the no, the supporter. Thought it for a moment they might have been called for too much time. So that's the end of the quarter. And NCAA college football, Oklahoma and Nebraska, will continue after this commercial message. And also a word from our local stations. May I 
I speak to Mr. Little? Yes, he's expecting your call. I know where to reach him. With the ComKey system, your secretary can make conference calls, so even when you're out of the office, you won't miss important calls. Hi, the merger's on. From now on, we're Ford and Little. Gee, I kind of thought Little and Ford. Well, you know, F comes before L. The con key system by Western Electric. It saves you time and money. Tall guys first, little guys second. Only from the bell system. I don't think so. Hey, Norm, when it comes to switching the natural light, add me to the roster. Tony Jurgensen, good to see you. Did you switch for the all-natural ingredients? No, I switched for the taste. Now what a golden opportunity for the big red team from Nebraska. Trailing 14 to 10, they have a first down on the 15-yard line. And Michigan now going into the fourth quarter. Leads Ohio State 9-3. During a Michigan game 30 years ago in that stadium, on the roof of that stadium, in a howling blizzard, and the final score was 9 to 3. First and 10, Nebraska knocking on the door. Andre Franklin has the hole plugged up on him after getting tied. Johnny Lewis, number 95, brings him down. Again, let's emphasize the wind has now gone to the back of the Cornhuskers. A strong wind from the south. I don't know whether you can uh, tell it from the flags, but they, they have been absolutely straight out. There it is. There's a, a graphic example of what, what these guys have been suffering with, passing-wise, kicking-wise. There'll be a lot of windburden cheeks down there in that north end. Okay. Second down and eight. Nebraska just beginning the fourth quarter. steals outside he goes oh check that Quinn still has the ball a great fake by Anthony Steeles and Quinn kept the ball and is knocked down by number 48 Mike Coase there's a, a bit of the sleight of hand that would have thrilled Blackstone the magician watch, watch this watch Jeff Quinn the quarterback just put the ball protect it where nobody from Oklahoma can see it right there below his numbers and then he just turns to the outside it was good pursuit but Jeff Quinn put that play in with Anthony Steele's complimenting on the good fake. Well, I think if we, if we possibly have the fake that Anthony Steele's carried out, now that's the whole thing in deception, is you can't be over-anxious to look back and see what happened. What you have to do is continue that fake, as Anthony Steele's did. And the man who was down on the ground was the one who, who captured Anthony Steele's. Whether we can see that on the... Uh, on the other replay or not. There's another point, though, Bill. Anthony Stills, he sees, he's faking, and he makes the right fake and everything, but Jeff Quinn's the brave guy. He's got to turn his back to the Oklahoma defense. It takes the block, takes the great fakes of both of them. So the man down on the ground is Steve Quayley, who made the stop over there, and he is getting back up, and we'll be back in just a moment. You know, choosing business insurance can be a slippery... Now let's take a look at the complimenting fakes here, Steve. Watch Anthony Steele. Watch him fake. He looks like he's got the football in his right arm and pumping there. Jeff Quinn puts it, hides it away, and then makes the big play. Big so it's a third down and four. The ball is on the nine-yard line. Ball count. Hand off to Franklin. Snag from behind. Gets it down to about the seven. Richard Turner making the stop. Ooh, the pressure is really on now as Nebraska has the ball on the six and a half yard line. Let's call it the seven. They've got to go to the five. Remember what Nebraska ran earlier on a fourth down situation. They went outside with red wine. Let's see this time if they decide to go inside with the quick hitting play with Andre Franklin, the trap play. Todd Brown goes out wide to the right. Red wine is lined up behind Franklin. Oklahoma moving, crouching, trying to plug the holes. Hand off to Red Wine. He is stopped. Slammed to the ground by Mike Coast, number 48. And Oklahoma takes over the football against the nation's leading rushing team. What a stop by Mike Coast. Boy, he handled him just like a sack of flour. Well, I tell you, Mike Coast, the linebackers for Oklahoma have played exceptionally well today. Watch Red Wine. He's trying to go over the top. Coast is in a crouch position, ready to take him on, and he hits him high, so he's able to push him back. If you hit him low, he's liable to fall forward for yardage. You hit him high around the upper body, and you make a good play, and you drive him back. 
13 minutes and four seconds to go as Oklahoma has stopped Nebraska. Oklahoma tries it inside as Stanley Wilson just gets his nose on the 10, and that's about it. 12 minutes, 55 seconds to go in this one. Nebraska jumped off to a 10 to nothing lead in the first quarter. Oklahoma came back with 14 points in the second. There was no scoring in the third. And now we have 12.45 to go in the ballgame. Oklahoma sending Bobby Grayson back in for Steve Rhodes. Nebraska dominating that third quarter, but not being able to punch it in. Hoping now to cause another Oklahoma fumble. They've lost to two. Watts ducks inside of the 12, and that's about it. Jimmy Williams making the stop on him. Number 96, the defensive left end. Bobby Williams also making the stop. Again, J.C. Force Valor makes the block. It's a veer block type. They're trying to get J.C. on the run. The halfback makes the block on the uh, defensive end, and J.C. just tries to cut inside and get some yards. Nebraska's linebackers are playing well. They're flowing, and they're going to the outside. Nebraska's got a good scheme against the Oklahoma wishbone. And a very important play here for Oklahoma with a third down and seven on their own 12. Handoff goes through to Stanley Wilson on the first down at the 24-yard line as Russell Gary made the stop. What a quick opening and a quick reacting run by Wilson. Watch Stanley Wilson to the left, number 32, the fullback. He just pops inside. They make the block. Nebraska was thinking outside for Oklahoma. And again, the quick hitting fullback. Both football teams defensively looked at each other's uh, opponents offensively and said, we've got to stop the quick hitting fullback play. First down for Oklahoma, a big one it was. 11 minutes and 30 seconds to go. Goes to Buster Rhymes and he gets out to about the 35 yard line, close to another first down. Gary Nelson, number 92. Tom Osborne looking a bit uh, more nervous as he wears a path on the far sideline. First down. Buster Rhymes came into the football game for Oklahoma, rushing for 469 yards, averaging 7.3 yards every time he carried the football. David Overstreet, Jarvis Redwine, uh, for the number of rushes they carried, averaged 7.2 each. Oh, Oklahoma right in, jumped offside. The right tackle of his, number 61, Ed Coleman. That'll cost him five. Ohio State has just missed on a field goal attempt by Yana Kievsky. And so in that game, Michigan is still leading in the fourth quarter. 12.09 to go in the ball game, and Michigan's leading 9-3. to three. Movement to the line, Oklahoma, first down. Coming up, the Trojans of Southern California against the Bruins of UCLA. You've seen both of those teams uh, this year. UCLA shutting out Ohio State earlier in the season. We see the Trojans in two weeks against Notre Dame. Stanley Wilson blasting up for about four as Toby Williams brings him down. Louis Oubre, number 66, is the man who lays the block here. He's an all Big Eight uh, performer. Being all American, a lot of teams. Big, big leaders. Good size, 262, pushes his weight around. Three years started. Second and 11 for Oklahoma. Watts gets the blitz. Down he goes as Jimmy Williams once again blasts through and knocks him down for about a six yard loss, all the way back to the 30 yard line. 10 minutes to go. Like talked Halloween about, replay. We talked about the defensive ends in this football game. They have been, uh, we've called their name several times. Jimmy Williams especially has played an excellent football game. He has made some big plays. Third down. Outside goes Wilson. He has hit so hard there was a helmet that was flying there in the crowd on the far side of the field. Thought it might have been a football. Sammy Sims on the hit. One thing about Wilson, he gives you every ounce every second, and he may have been shaken up on that play. He's still down on one knee. That was his helmet that popped off. He did get rattled. Oh, he's been just great today. 
Oklahoma traditionally this year has been a very high scoring team in the fourth quarter of their 294 points 101 have come in the fourth period. Keeling's done a great job. The battle of the punters. I guess we'd have to give the edge to Keeling. Oklahoma was concerned coming to the ball game. He has had some tough problems with inconsistency through the year but he has played very well today. He's punted well. Oh, that wind is really gusting. I don't know whether you saw that balloon go floating down there. It must have been going 35 miles an hour as it went right across it and distracted him. And he, I think he just wanted to get uh, calmed down here for just a second. Nine minutes, 23 seconds to go. Keeling knows that a lot of pressure is on him right now. If he can put that ball deep and make Nebraska go back, let's say, for, uh, oh, maybe the 18 to 20 yard line, make a lot of difference. Coming up on College Football 80 this weekend, some traditional battles, which we hope you'll join us for over most of our ABC stations. This game, of course, the Ohio State-Michigan game, South Carolina-Clemson, Texas, Baylor, Stanford, California, Mississippi State, and Mississippi. Uh, incidentally, Mississippi State is anxiously awaiting the outcome of this game because uh, the, loser could be, uh, the loser could go to the uh, Sun Bowl, depending upon, you know, as we mentioned earlier, what could happen next week if Oklahoma wins here. That Oklahoma timeout is because Oklahoma only had 10 men on the field. Mr. Keeling wanted a little additional help. And he puts his foot into it, gets a good kick away. Has enough pop to it, takes the uh, return man, Dave Legal, back to about the 28, 29 yard line. And that's where Nebraska will take over the football. Nine minutes, 15 seconds to go, and they're four down. Tied the Irish three to three in that historic game at Grant Field of Atlanta. The only real blemish on the Notre Dame record. First and ten for Nebraska on the 28-yard line, trailing 14 to 10. Quick opener. Andre Franklin spins through. Well, that's about the quickest eight yards I've seen all day. Franklin really moves through those holes. He's gained 94 yards today. But Nebraska is trailing. Eight minutes, 48 seconds to go. Unbalanced line to the left. Franklin, first down. At the 41, Keith Gary, number 92, makes the stop. course how great Franklin has been one hundred yards more than that. not back for a bad for a blocking a blocking pull back in the eye formation win on the quick turn gives it to red wine fumbles the ball but it goes out of bounds Ooh, they're lucky they went to the short side of the field on that one. Watch Jeff Quinn. He'll turn around. The reason he hesitates, he's waiting on his guard to make the pull. Uh, Mandelko to get out in front of him so he can make the block. The ball hits Redwine in the right place, but I think he was concentrating on the linebacker, Coast, that was standing right there in front of him. That wasn't Coast. Was somebody else. Second down. Good and nine on the 43-yard line. Pitch goes back and Quinn throws. It is caught. Steals has the ball on the first down at the 41-yard line of Oklahoma. The ball going from Quinn to Redwine, back to Quinn, and then he throws to Steals. Now there's one of the 12 trick plays Nebraska has. So I look at uh, Jarvis gets the ball, comes right back to Quinn. He's going to wait to find Steals, his wing back, 33. Outside, plenty of cushion, plenty of room. He makes the catch. Watch this. Jeff Quinn, he'll hand it to Jarvis Redwine. He just kind of looks around, gets the ball right back, is ready to throw it. 16 yards on the play. First down on the 42-yard line of Oklahoma. Nebraska's trailing 14 to 10. Quinn shovels on the inside. It's blocked for him, and he only gets a yard before he's knocked to the ground by number 95, middle guard Johnny Lewis. And number 53 there, who has played a heck of a game, is Orlando Flanagan. Oh. 
Flanagan's the only player on the Oklahoma football team that doesn't have his name on the back of the jersey. The people that made up the uh, names spelled his name incorrectly, so he doesn't have it on the back of his jersey. I can't stand to see Fleming with only one M. <laughs> people usually don't miss Bill Martin. Second and nine for Nebraska. Win behind protection. Over the middle. There's his man. First down. Anthony Steele comes through again at the 28-yard line. 13 yards. The 12th man, Mo, just jumped on Nebraska's back. Watch Quinn drop straight back. He's going to split right the, in the behind the zone, behind the linebackers, and hit Anthony Steele on the crossing route right across the middle. Good throw, good catch, excellent protection. Watch the protection. Quinn has got all day to throw the ball. Watch this. Sets, plants his feet, throws a perfect strike right between the linebackers, Riley and Coach. Steels has three catches today for 41 yards. It's another first down. Quinn looks, throws. There's a marker down as Jeff Finn caught the ball. I saw some movement there, but I thought it might have been Remington, the center, who, uh, again, fires out so fast, you think it's an interior man moving. Let's see what it is. The penalty was thrown in the secondary. It had, I think it's going to be against Oklahoma. Let's see if we can see anything, what happens. Jeff Quinn again, faking to his back. Jeff Quinn's a good faker, good leader, ball control man. He just really has a good feel for what's going on the field. The flag was thrown in the secondary. I saw it darting across, but uh, here it is again. Let's see if we can find it this time. Look at Quinn fake. That is a poised senior quarterback, Orton, Nebraska. Hits his big tight end across the middle, and where's the flag coming? Oh, there I it is. There I it see is. the flag. Well, I see what it was. I think it was a, it was a, uh, a face mask. Looked like the left hand may have been up high on Jeff Finn by the tackler. Maybe on uh, some uh, back judge out there uh, saw it, obviously. We have defensive pass interference. Oklahoma beyond where the pa pass was completed. That makes it first down at that spot. Also, he was he was fooling around with a deep man. I think it might have been somebody on uh, Todd Brown who was uh, pretty much taking the secondary out of the area where Finn was crossing on the uh, for the tight end play for the pass. All right, that clock keeps relentlessly moving as the anxious Nebraska fans watch it at 6:30. First down. 18 big yards to go. Franklin gets about four or five of those as he's brought down by Orlando Flanagan at about the 14, 13 yard line, let's call it. Boy, there have been some late game heroics in this football game. 1971, the great play by Taggy across, uh, Taggy to Kenny in 1972 was a great ball game in the late part of the ball game. 76 was another year. Billy Sims fumble that everybody remembers. Second down and five. The ball is on the 13-yard line. Nebraska trailing by four in the fourth quarter. 5.50 to play. Franklin fumbles the ball. It's covered at the one-yard line, and it looks like Nebraska has it. It was fumbled forward, and there was a red-shirted player at the one-yard line. No, no, it is Oklahoma. Who's on the bottom of the pile? Everybody wants to know. He'll come up with the ball, whoever it is. Looks it's like Daryl Sanji, number 16, at the one-foot line. Can you believe that? Well, earlier, Switzer said he had to be lucky. He was lucky. You know, I love the fresh, clean smell of barley because I can almost taste the Schlitz beer I'm going to make from it. As Nelson hits it. Keith Gary is the one who pops the ball. He's right there, 92, pops the ball. There the ball, pops loose. Now look at 16, Sanji. He's coming into the picture, hits the back of the referee, and the ball pops under him right there. Schleisner almost had a hand on it. Here it is again. Watch him. Andre Franklin. Watch the ball. Schleister's going to try to go after it. Sanji will come into your picture. He hits the, one of the referees, and then he pops the ball, pops right under him. Oklahoma, Barry Switzer said he's got to have some luck. Five minutes, 44 seconds to go. And Watts just worms his way out of the end zone to about the one and a half yard line. What a turn of events. Nebraska with momentum, moving down, had the ball. And Franklin, their most reliable guy, looked like he had a head of steam, and all of a sudden, Gary hit him, the ball popped loose, and there you saw what happened. Is that the first fumble Nebraska's had today? The, the first, first one they lost. Yes. 
fumble first one they've lost. Right? Second down. Watts just grinds it out. He doesn't want to make any chances of any fooling around with handoffs or anything else. Nebraska knows, of course, it's going to get the ball back if they can just keep the pressure on down deep. Checking into the lineup now on the Oklahoma offense is number 61 right tackle Ed Culver. Going in for Lindell Byford. Four minutes, 55 seconds to play. The Sooners leading 14 to 10. They won last year 17 to 14. was almost forced back into the end zone. And it brings up a fourth down. Oklahoma punt coming up. What's the play? Nebraska almost stuffs him right back in the end zone. Winters, he gets right there. He almost is trying to go backwards. But he keep, barely keeps his feet going and tries to get some yardage. This I, is a big play. You bet. Michael Keating with a lot of pressure. He's only a yard inside the end line. Boy, what a shot that is. Squirts off the left side of his foot. It's a terrible kick. It's going to go out inside the 20. His first really bad kick of the day of 14 yards. And now the pressure once again goes on Oklahoma. Four minutes, 26 seconds to go. The week Here's what Michael Keeling did with the ball. Watch his leg cross over and hit it. He didn't have all the, the type distance he normally gets, and he hurried his kick, and that forces it outside. You've got to make things happen. He was getting pressure, and he knew he had to hurry, and he hurries, and sometimes you don't get your best kicks. And so Nebraska has new life at the 17-yard line with 4.26 to go, and they're trailing 14-10 fourth quarter. Looks to the outside, pitches it deep. Redwine gets it down to the seven yard line. Jay Jimerson made the stop. Close to a first down. And remember, years through the 1970s, except for Jerry Taggy, they have not had this play in their offense. Watch it go to Jarvis Redwine. He sees the seam. He's got Oklahoma spread out. They're in pursuit, but he just cuts inside, protects the ball. He's wanting to get a touchdown. And if this is good, it'll be first and goal to go for Nebraska. Jarvis Redwine ignited things in the first quarter for Nebraska with an 89-yard touchdown. So it's first and goal to go. The ball is midway between the six and seven-yard line. That's it. 4.15. Red wine deep behind Andre Franklin. Jeff Quinn looking over the defense. Oklahoma massed up there, expecting Andre Franklin on the inside, and that's what they get. But he gets it down to the three-yard line. Richard Turner bringing him down, and it'll be second and goal to go with the ball in the three. Three minutes, 54 seconds to go. But there was a marker down on the far side, and it is against Oklahoma on the preliminary signal. Personal foul. Let's see if we can find out what happened. Tight shot on Quinn. Quick hitting play to Andre Franklin. There it is, face mask. See it? Face mask right there on the tackle. Moves the ball down to the one and a half yard line. Now, I'll tell you, that shows you how sharp the officials are. One the yard line. Okay, we have a dead ball foul, personal foul. Oklahoma, first down. First down on the one and a half. It would take a miracle to keep Nebraska out of the end zone now, but stranger things have happened. Watch the quick hitting track play, Andre Franklin. Redwine likes to dive. I think one of the great divers of all time was Billy Sims. Boy, he used to fly over those lines. Redwine likes to do the same thing. I have a feeling, just like you do, uh, Steve, but uh, Andre Franklin, with uh, the tremendous compactness and leg drive that he has, 
would be the guy to call on. First and goal to go on the one and a half yard line as Nebraska's trailing 14 to 10. Franklin gets close but does not get in as Johnny Lewis spins him back. And the tension continues to build. Nebraska fans are wanting to score. The score has been 14 to 10. It's 43 seconds remaining in the first quarter. At least the last score Nebraska had was at 43 seconds remaining in the first quarter. Then Oklahoma came back the second quarter and scored a couple. Three and a half minutes to go in the Michigan-Ohio State game. Three minutes and 25 seconds to go in this one. Second down on the half-yard line. Quinn makes it himself. Touchdown! Nebraska in the stadium absolutely erupts. is covered with oranges. <laughs> Jeff Quinn, senior quarterback, decided to take it in himself from the half-yard line, and he squeezed his way the last possible ounce into the end zone. 316 to go. Seibel will try the kick. This is an important extra point play. Uh, I guess so. 16-14. They miss it. Oklahoma could win it with a field goal. Something going on over there on that. Uh, I think the official was knocked down. Or else he slipped. A bomb by an orange. Might have been hit with something. Look at him. He might have been. That's the most foolish thing in the world to throw an object onto a football field or a baseball field or anything. I and mean, it's just nothing like a missile. First of all, the people who are throwing it have all the advantage of height. So they have all the momentum going for them. And you take an orange, this is heavy as a baseball, to do a lot of serious damage. Here is Seibel. I couldn't hear all of that. Maybe you could, Steve. I basically told them to cut all this throwing the oranges or the ball game may not continue. Keeping perfect control of the ball game. Boy, it's been a beautifully officiated game. Vance Carlson, the referee. Here's one of the ironies. If this ball should go through, the ball game should wind up this way. It'll be the third straight year, can you believe it, that it's been 17 to 14? Two years ago, Nebraska won 17 to 14. Oklahoma had a 17-14 win in Norman last year. 17 to 14, Nebraska now. With three minutes and 16 seconds to go. Let's look at the touchdown from all the Rangers. Jeff Quinn using his 6'2", 207 pounds, going behind Dave Remington, just barely keeping his leg drive. He's involved away from Nebraska, and he just gets, he also gets a little bit of help from the backside. Let's see what the defense is saying. Everybody's crouched down, barely trying to make something happen. Most people thought that it might come inside. They're trying to stand him up and push, but Andre Franklin and Jarvis Redwine are pushing on the other side. See, you see Jarvis out here signaling touchdown. He knew it. Andre Franklin was pushing up. Okay, watch again. Watch uh, Andre Franklin give his quarterback a little push. Watch him come in from the backside. He sees his quarterback watching him start to push him. Get in there, he says. Yeah, there's the push. Excellent. That's down big play. Nebraska went, uh, didn't have to go far for it. Kicking game. That uh, possibly could be construed as an infraction because you're not allowed to aid or abet by pushing a ball carrier. He's on your team. Now when there's that many guys walling around, you know, who can tell push from shove? <laughs> 17 to 14, Nebraska has come back. That's the first points they've scored since the first quarter. Boy, give it to Oklahoma. They have really played a tremendous football game here today. The Huskers are out in front, but there's still plenty of time. The only thing that's really a disadvantage for Oklahoma is the fact they do have the stiff win to contend with, with 3.16 to play. Won't be any return on this one. So we'll begin the... 16 at the 20-yard line. In the 
Michigan-Ohio State game. Michigan with two minutes in 10 seconds to go is leading the ball game 9-3. to three. Ohio State, however, has the football first and 10 on the 20. I well remember Arch Leister a year ago taking the Buckeyes down against uh, UCLA in the Coliseum in the last minute or two and winning the game for them. They'll keep you up to date, but right now it's 17-14. to 14. The Sooners trailing by three. What? Pitches it back. Rhymes cuts back inside, gets only a yard or two before Steve Dan, program number 35, knocks him down, and there's a marker. I think Nebraska's going to get piling on. Late hit. And Means get on the tackle. Immediately following this game, boy, that ought to be a spearing Nebraska first down. A spearing foul. That means putting your head gear right into the bread basket or the chest, face, someplace of the opponent, using it as a weapon. And it costs Nebraska 15. First down for Oklahoma at the 37-yard line. Fumble. Loose ball. At the 43, it's covered. Sammy Wilson fumbled the ball. Barry Switzer a bit on the grim side. What it really make it tough is to get it down there. Stanley Wilson, let's see what happens if he gets the ball. The ball's in the right place. He just popped the ball loose. And really, nobody's hand didn't look like anybody's hand got on the football. It just looked like it popped loose. Oubre got it. Number 66. Louis Oubre got it. That's two he's come up with today. Down and four. Oklahoma on its own 42. Watts pitches it back. Look at this. As Chet Winters, or excuse me, Buster Rhymes gets it all the way down to the 15 yard line. <laughs> Can you believe it? For a moment, it looked like it was a bad decision to make the pitch. Because it looked like he had the hole, but it turned out great for Oklahoma. We said JC Watts has to have a big day today, and he has had a splendid day. Watch him, the last minute pitch. Buster Ryan, now he's got the everything that was up. He's got everything going his way now. He's trying to make the cutback. He stumbles a little bit, so he stays to the outside. Sims has to make the tackle, and here we go into the same <laughs> script we've been in every year since 1971. 2.32 to go, the ball of the 14-yard line. Stanley Wilson gets it up to about the 11-yard line as Kurt Heinlein brings him down. This crowd was absolutely stunned there after that 42-yard run by George Buster Rhymes, a freshman out of Miami, Florida, who's had to fill in when David Overstreet was hurt, and he's played brilliant. The big, not only the big play by Rhymes, but what's made the difference was the penalty. The 15-yard penalty really gave Oklahoma some added push. Second down, seven, ball on the 11th. Sims, numbers 92 and 6, putting the stop. Oklahoma, you think several things possible here. 17-14, a field goal would tie it. Who would go to the Orange Bowl? Probably the Orange Bowl would take Nebraska. So you, you've got to go for it. Probably just because of the loftier uh, national ranking, four against nine. And the fact that Oklahoma's been there the last four years. Right, and the fact that maybe uh, a chance for a rematch. Florida State pass it is caught and roll out of bounds Bobby Grayson running parallel to the line caught the ball at the two yard line and he's out of bounds with one minute and 20 seconds to go it'll be first and goal to go what a play by Watts the rollout pass watch him Oklahoma they just keep coming at you running and then all of a sudden they hit you in the pass it's the out route Grayson makes the great catch JC Watts again the throw watch him he rolls Perfect. It's got to be right there. Good coverage by Means. It's on the one and a half yard line. First and goal to go. 120 to play. Handoff. Short. Right to the line of scrimmage. George Buster Rhymes was given the ball. One minute, 15 seconds to go. Nebraska is out in front, 17 to 14. Their fans were highly elated and emotionally up in the air, but just a few moments after that, they see despair 
with the ball resting just the length of the football plus one yard outside their goal line. Wow, this is big. 62 seconds to go. Pitch goes to the deep man. Touchdown, Oklahoma. George Rhymes blasts it in. And the Oklahoma bench goes nuts. Talk about a gutty performance here today. The Oklahoma Sooners with 56 seconds to go after seeing their goal line dented by Jeff Quinn to put Nebraska out in front 17 to 14. They've come back the length of the field in less than three minutes, and the Sooners are back up on top, 20 to 17. And this ball game is over. Holds will hold. Healing will kick. And it is up and good. And so they've gone 80 yards in eight plays. It took two minutes and 20 seconds to go. And Oklahoma leads again by four. We've got 56 seconds to play. There's Buster Rhymes, a happy guy, being hugged by his teammates. Here's the touchdown that he scored. They came, Andy Means came quick on the hard stunt. JC had to pitch quick, and it goes back to Rhymes. Watch it again. Watch Andy Means, number 34, come from the outside very quick, the hard stunt, and Buster Rhymes, all he's got to do is take one block. The receiver makes a good block. Everybody's covered. Just, uh, uh, Chet Winters made a good block on the outside also. Oklahoma score. I'll tell you one thing. This uh, game is not over with 56 seconds to go, and you have a team like Nebraska that can strike quickly with a guy like Redwine. So it's 21-17. Tom Osborne must be wondering, what do I have to do to beat this guy? Can't find it. Steals finally does, but he's awfully deep. Only gets it back to the 13-yard line. Couldn't find the football, and Jim Rockford knocks him down. That took two seconds off the clock. Well, there's so many heroes out here today, it's very difficult for us to really come up with the... Chevrolet most valuable players. I think one thing is very certain about Oklahoma. J.C. Watts was absolutely fantastic today. We'll cover the Nebraska in just a moment. Right now we have 50 seconds to go. 21-17, the Huskers trail. 86 yards away from the Oklahoma goal line. And Quinn gets protection. Throws to the sideline. It is caught at the 27-yard line. Jeff Finn, the tight end, was the one who caught it. 13-yard game, and it only took seven seconds. Comes up to the 27th. Oklahoma will give them the short uh, gain, but they will not. They mustn't let them get the big, long gain. They'll give them the short pass. Quinn, once again, looks to the sidelines. Goes a little deeper with it this time, and he goes to John Noonan, number 95. He plays behind split end Todd Brown. 31 seconds to go. What's the defense? Oklahoma's playing all a lot of you got their secondary backs in. They're flying what they call two deep, five under type coverage. And they're gonna give them the short route. They can attack the short route. Oh boy. Now the goal line is a little shorter, only 61 yards away with 31 seconds to go. First down. Third pass in a row. Went up inside. His snag. Fine defensive play by Johnny Lewis, number 95. He was out of the play momentarily, just reached out his arm, and comes up with a big one. The Huskers have three more timeouts. Going to spend one here. This is what's made this football game such a great game over the years. The fact that uh, it's seesawed back and forth. Each quarter has been won basically by a different team. It's back and forth. Oklahoma took the ball the length of the field. Helped by a Nebraska fumble, or not a fumble, but a penalty. And now Nebraska's got to go the length, but don't have quite the amount of time. They've got to do things quick. Coming up, Trojans and Bruins. And we'll remind you also that uh, the Michigan-Ohio State game with one minute and eight seconds to go, Ohio State has the ball much in the same position that Nebraska is in because Ohio State is trailing Michigan by six and they have it on their own 32 with a minute to go. There's 24 seconds to go in this one and the Sooners are up on top 21 to 17 in one of the best ball games ever played in this series. 
Next week, Oklahoma plays Oklahoma State. The red line goes down the sidelines, and he's knocked out of bounds. And Quinn can't throw to it. Now he goes. He has a man deep, but the pass is going to be short. It is intercepted. Taking the ball is Sanji. And he is down at the 12-yard line. What a wild play. Only two seconds to go in the ball game. Quinn just couldn't throw it far enough. You have got to compliment the Oklahoma defensive coaches. They had Oklahoma prepared. This is a defense that has been abused all year long, that's given up a lot of points, and they have played well. The secondary, they've got a four deep kind of an umbrella coverage. Everybody's back. The one man breaks real deep. Now watch Quinn. He's trying to throw yeah, as Steve far as Davies. he can. Is it Davies? Yeah. And the ball pops up, and there's the old tip drill, and Sanji's right there, carries it in the end zone, and then comes back out. But the Oklahoma defense, the secondary has been suspect all year because of injuries, and they have played well today. I guess so. And so with only two seconds to go, the ball game is virtually over. As Barry Switzer knows it, he allows himself a big, a big grin. And that is it. It is all over, and Oklahoma has upset Nebraska 21-17 to to take over the lead in the Big A Conference and certainly with the inside track on the Orange Bowl game. Tom Osborne will come over, and a sportsmanlike gesture will shake hands with Barry Switzer, but today it's Oklahoma by four. Recently, a landmark...